Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. This is a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports. It's time for the 2024 Girls State Hockey Tournament on Capital City Rock and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports presented by Kubota. The State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by Pelican Power Sports, Xander Auto Parts, Wagner Auto, AGE, AirTech, Weatherall, Ferding Electric, the South Dakota Amateur Hockey Association, and Kathy Sunshine Properties. Now Van Dusseldorf comes free, shot, she scores! Briella Van Dusseldorf with a power play. And it's a one nothing lead for the Brookings Rangers. And by Beck Motors. Visit Brookings. Venture Communications. First Dakota National Bank. Hermanson Antodontics. Hockey Headquarters. J-Bar Construction. May Adam and Leisure Palace. Shot goes on and that one scores! Possibly tipped! The Aberdeen Cougars strike with 15.55 in this third period. And by Capital City Ford Lincoln and Toyota. First National Bank of Pier. Pier Regional Airport. Hunsley Auto Body and Sandblasting. The Watertown Area Chamber of Commerce. The Field House and First United Methodist Church. The Brookings Rangers, they survived a scare Friday morning, and with five seconds left to go, they come back and win the state championship with a two nothing win over the Aberdeen Cougars. A 25 save shutout for Rory Quam, and the Rangers- And now for the call of the action, John Winkler and Jim Lloyd. And as we welcome you back here as we are set for game number three of our day as the White Capitals and the Brookings Rangers get set in the 4-5 matchup. John Winkler alongside Jim Lloyd and uh, Jeff Anderson. As uh, guys, this by seeds, this should be the best matchup of the day. But by the way these two teams play, this might be the best matchup of the day. It was a 2-1 win the last time these two teams played for the Capitals in Brookings. And while the Capitals beat Brookings twice, Jim, this is a game where the Capitals can't just think they're going to come in here and win for the third straight uh, time. They've, they've got to make sure they come in here and earn it. Well, it's hard to hard to beat a team three times. It really is in, in any type of sports. you know. And if you look at these goalies, they both give up about three and a half goals a game. So on paper, it's a tie. And I actually, I think with the, this, this seeding, this fourth and fifth seeding, it probably is going to be a, our closest game of the day, you'd like to think. Yeah, and with the way this uh, these two teams match up, Jeff, as Jim just mentioned, very close uh, in a lot of different ways, and this is a uh, a fun matchup getting set for for this afternoon. Well, I think I think in Brookings' case, because they don't have a junior, they don't have a, a senior. They start out with six sophomores, six freshmen. They're young. They might be the uh, the eyes of this place, the newness of this, and having not having played perhaps in a state tournament before, things like that. It may take them a period or two to get over some of that, some of the uh, the jitters, some of that stuff. So we'll have to see how that works out, if it's in their favor or not. Well, the Capitals are looking to get to the second round for the first time in uh, quite some time. They have uh, always been going into that constellation bracket. They want to, they're a higher seed. They're the home team in this game, and they're going to try and get themselves into the uh, second round, into that championship semifinal to take on the winner of Sioux Falls and Watertown, which is coming up later on tonight uh, with a 430 puck drop. This Capitals team, uh, they are coming in at 8-5-1. and one. They're alone tied of the Mitchell Marlins. They, they've beaten Brookings twice. The Rangers at 7-7. Seven and seven. The 4-5 matchup. I, I think both teams would have rather been in different spots than where they are right now because when you look at how the, the season win, you say one, two, and three would have been pretty good. Four and five, eh, probably not so good. You didn't really want to have those four and five spots. But this is the, the what they're dealt with, and it should be a fun matchup between these two teams. The White Capitals and the Brookings Rangers coming up here from the uh, Prairie, Ice, uh, Lake, uh, Ice, Prairie Lakes Ice Arena here in Watertown. We'll return with our uh, starting lineups and the uh, opening puck drop after this. You're listening to the State Tournament on Capital City Rock. You're watching it on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. 
Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day. Sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find your nearest dealer at KubotaOrangedays.com. The Fieldhouse and Pier is the perfect place to sit back and watch the state hockey tournament with friends and family. The Fieldhouse, with a full bar, gives you that feeling like you're at the game without having to leave town with a selection of your favorite concession-type food. And who doesn't love some pizza? There's free popcorn, peanuts, and Gardettos to complement any of your snack cravings while enjoying the games on one of the many big screen TVs. The Fieldhouse, 2013 East Gate Avenue in Pier. Your place for the game this weekend. Go Caps! Capital City Ford in Pier is your trusted Ford dealership in Pier, and the reason why your loyal customers keep coming back. They offer an extensive new and pre-owned inventory, as well as lease specials and expert auto service. They provide exceptional customer service and are an integral part of their community. Check out their full inventory line at CapitalCityFord.com. That's CapitalCityFord.com. Go Capitals! Venture Communications is excited to be a sponsor for the 2024 Boys and Girls State Hockey Tournaments. Good luck to all our talented players. Venture Communications has deep roots in rural South Dakota. Venture now proudly provides fiber to the home to 100% of our customers, enabling them to enjoy super fast and reliable internet connections. Call us today at 605-852-2224. That's 605-852-2224. Or look us up online at VentureCom.net. Best of luck to all the athletes in the 2024 State Boys and Girls Hockey Tournaments. This winter, sip on a delicious hot cocoa and lose yourself in the grace of a fresh falling snow before you smash that hot mug on the driveway and join First Dakota to bank some noise for winter sports. Stomp for block shots, holler for match ceiling takedowns, and go berserk for a perfect dismount. Let's give the home team all we've got. Bank some noise with us at First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at firstdakota.com, member FDIC. Your home and business are important to you, and you need quality furnace and air conditioning products and service. With a combined 50-plus years of experience, AirTech Heating and Cooling provides you with just that service. Call 945-0160 for sales, service, and installation of furnaces, air conditioning, and heat pumps. AirTech Heating and Cooling features the American Standard products. Sales, installation, and service. You want the best, and that's what you'll find at AirTech Heating and Cooling in Pier. Hello, I'm Pastor Jeff Lathrop of Pier First United Methodist Church and I'd like to invite you to join us in person for worship on Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. You can also join us on Facebook Live or on KCCR 1240 a.m. or 98.9 FM for our Sunday morning broadcasts at 11 a.m. Come worship with us at First and I Methodist Church where you will find open hearts, open minds, and open doors. Then we welcome you back as we are set for puck drop between the UI Capitals and the Brookings Rangers as we'll send it down for the introduction of our starting lineups. The number five team, the Brookings Rangers, and your four senior Wahi Capitals. In fact, the hand will stand out, remove your cap or hat, and face the northwest corner for the play of our national anthem. <sighs>
Number 10, Mia Forrester. Number 17, Sawyer Triplett. Number 18, Anna Rasmussen. Number 19, Ava Kale. Number 21, Kinsey Grindler. And in gold here, Rangers, number 30, Rory Kwan. And now you're starting one up for your four seed, Oahe Capitals. Number 11, Eric Birch. Number 23, Ava Lavender. Number 52, Addison Hunsley. Number 66, Brindley Kapka. Number 17, Brittany Forrest. And in gold here, Oahe Capitals, number nine, Sophia Pekka. There's one thing left to do, hockey fans. Let's play hockey! So we're ready to roll for game number three of the day as the Hawaii Capitals and the Brookings Rangers. And it is Sawyer Triplett, Maya Forrester, and Anna Rasmussen, the three forwards. Uh, Ava Colley and Kinsey Grendler will be the two defensemen uh, in this first period for the uh, starting lineup for the Brookings Rangers. Roy Quab, six wins, 3.40 goals against average, 881 save percentage. Does have two shutouts on the season, one being against the Aberdeen Cougars and a one nothing win, the number two seed in the state tournament. For the Hawaii Capitals, it is Haley First, Ava Lavinger, and uh, Bradley Kafka, the three forwards. Elliot Birch and Mallory Learkamp will be the starting defensemen. And uh, Sophia Pashong in net. She's got eight wins, 3.58 goals against average, 8.47 save percentage. As we're underway for game three, as the first round continues, and the Hawaii Capitals will win the opening faceoff. They won 2-1 to one in Brookings earlier this season. They won 6-3 to three at home towards the beginning of the season. As the Capitals are looking to continue to want to go undefeated against the Brookings Rangers here this season. This will be back in the neutral zone. A pass for Haley first for the Capitals. She is canceled out by Kenzie Grendler, but then taken back over by Lavinger. And Ava Lavinger will move it in as she'll push it on the backhand. And it will be grabbed by Ashana Peterson, who is quickly on the ice for the Brookings Rangers. Kenzie Grendler will move it up. And it'll be moved up to Jalissa Peterson. As Peterson, Jalissa Peterson will move it in. That one is taken away by the Capitals as Katie Reese for the Caps will move it in the Start to move it in the offensive end. Emily Nemec will pass it back. Elliot Birch, a quick hard pass across for Kirsten Miller. And then it'll be moved back in by the Brookings Rangers. Birch back to get it for the Caps. First minutes nearly gone by. This will be a bouncing puck that will result in an icing by the Capitals with 15.58 to go here in the first period. This Capitals team, they've got to the 4C. They've got to the number two goal scorer in the league. Bradley Kafka with 23 goals in 14 games. You look at Brookings Rangers, they're averaging 2.64 goals a game. Bradley Kafka is almost averaging two goals a game by herself. As this will be a faceoff won by the Brookings Rangers, now taken by the Hawaii Capitals. And it'll be moved over. Katie Reese will move it in the offensive end for the Caps. As she was canceled out by Gracie Peterson at the blue line. It's going to be held in by Addison Hunsley. And then push to the corner by Hunsley. Kenzie Grendler, the captain for the Brookings Rangers, will flip it up. Didn't get all of it, but Maya Forrester will pick it up and take it out of the offensive end for the away from the Capitals and move it into the offensive end for the Rangers. Although it quickly comes back out of the neutral zone where it's going to be grabbed by Grendler and will play it back to Peterson, who blew a tire. Well, didn't really blow a tire, just <laughs> lost her edge or lost her balance and fell over on the pass, but still made the pass completion. And it's going to be moved up for Ava Colley, who... Couldn't get that into the offensive end. Now moved back in by the Rangers. On the far side of the ice. Trying to center one. It's in front. And Sophia Pashog will cover for a whistle. Ava Colley was on the doorstep and a really good pass through a lot of traffic. And Pashog was sharp to make sure she covered up for the whistle. It looked almost like Pashog went down a little bit early and that puck stayed in front for quite a while. And she found it as she was down on her pads. Well, Face-off will come to the right of Sophia Pashong. 14.59 to go here in the first period. Both shots on goal belong to the Brookings Rangers, but no score on the Kubota scoreboard. This will be thrown back in by the Brookings Rangers from Jashana Peterson. And around it comes here to the near side as it comes out of the zone. And Bradley Kafka will pick it up, trying to create some space. Kafka lost her balance, blew a tire, and couldn't uh, get a pass over for Haley First, who was open in the middle of the ice. 
Back in by the Rangers. There's a shot on and that one. It was a hard wrister that went wide of the stick side of Sophia Pashok. The Rangers have had the better starts of these two teams right now. Bouncing puck settled down right in front of the net by uh, Hunsley, I believe it is, on that all the way across the ice. It was Hunsley to make that Learcamp that did that. And now Learcamp will pick the puck back up on the far side corner where she will look to exit the zone. That pass goes up. Haley first looked to her right. The puck was coming to her left, and it will go down for an icing and a whistle with 14.03 to go here in the first period. You mentioned Briley Kafka. You know, she scored 23 goals, and uh, the, the next next scoring on the team is, is Reese and Buffalo with six and five, respectively. And uh, so she's the one that they actually go to. The, the Caps, they have to... They have to get the puck to her if they're going to score. This will be taken back by the Brookings Rangers. Trying to center one off the side of the net. The Rangers fans thought they may have scored that first goal, but it hit the side of the nets. Addison Hunsley will move it up. Cammie Larson for the Capitals. On her back end, trying to pass it up for Reese. And good stick there by Reese. Forrester knocked her down, but Larson will pick up the puck again as her stick was lifted. Gretler's, Gretler lifted the stick of Larson when Larson was trying to bring the stick back down. She popped it on top of the helmet of Gretler. And now it's grabbed again here by the Hawaii Capitals. This will be moved back across. And as it will be taken by Edmondson, that will play it on the far side. And this will be played up and kicked along by Kirsten Miller. Trying to move it in the zone. That is Aubrey Stewart for the Capitals. Taken back by Dakota McIntaffer. McIntaffer will play it back. That was nearly a high stick. They say it was shoulder length. Play continues as the Rangers get it out of their own end of the ice. Kirsten Miller will play it across now for Micah Buffalo, who will try and tap it over for McIntaffer, but Stewart will grab it into the corner, comes in front for McIntaffer, and a glove save by Quam. <laughs> McIntaffer didn't get all of it. Quam was able to flash the leather to make the save with 12.55 to go here in the first period. That's a confidence builder by uh, Rory Quam. Boy, that was... That was close. If McIntaffer could have got just a little bit more on that shot, it would have, it might have found its way in the back of the nets. As Micah Buffalo win the faceoff, it'll be Hunsley to play it back over for Stewart, and they get back into the offensive end. Almost misplayed by the Rangers, and back behind the net, as it was uh, Gracie Peterson that couldn't play it. So now it's Micah Buffalo along with Dakota McIntaffer, but it will be taken now by Sawyer Triplett. Triplett will race into the offensive end. Triplett coming the nearest from the far side, trying to stuff it in on that far side. And it will be played back around as unable to get a shot away on Sophia Pichon. This will be played back to the Rangers end of the ice where it will be grabbed by Brooke Cruz. Brooke Cruz with just one assist on the season already where Jacoby Anderson and his team not going deep down the bench by any means, but getting that third line out there early on in this hockey game. The Capitals use three lines effectively. And to, to play a team that's got three lines, you have to have three lines yourself or two really, really good lines as Elliot Birch now will race in the offensive end. Birch with a shot. That's sticked away by Quam to the corner on the far side. Kenzie Grendler can't knock it out of the zone for the first attempt as Mallory Learcamp had knocked it down and eventually will come out. As it's all back in the offensive end, now it's Grendler taken back by the Capitals, who can't clear the zone. It's at the blue line. It is held in by Edmondson. And around it goes back behind the net for the Brookings Rangers. 11.25 to go here in the first period. No score between the Capitals and the Rangers on the Kubota scoreboard. In the corner, played around, back behind the net. Juggled by Grendler. She's their go-to goal scorer, Kenzie Grendler with 10 goals, the only... Ranger with double digits in goals. And besides Kafka, the only two skaters with double digit goals. Here's a pass up for Kafka. If she can pick up speed, although back checking was by a Forrester to not allow Kafka to get that potential breakaway. That pass now will be intercepted by Kafka. Back in her own end of the ice, she'll skate forward. Kafka trying to move in the offensive end. It was an onside play. Now Haley first will hit it hard back around and into the zone as it comes to the corner where Emily Nemec will play it over for Kafka. Looking to try and center it back over for Nemec. And instead it will be played back by Triplett and Sawyer Triplett will play it around the far side. That one just missed by Addie Hunsley. It will go down, but not far enough for an icing. Miller will wrap it around the boards here on the far side. Comes out of the zone. Nemec lifts the stick to allow Katie Reese 
to move it in the zone. Rory Crom will have to cover that and get a whistle with 10.14 to go here in the first period. What well, last year, these two teams playing the first round, the 3-6 matchup, it would, took up till about, I think it was about 10 minutes to go in the third period. Kirsten Miller got the only, at that point, the only goal of the game. Brookings ended up winning three to one, and then went on to win the state championship. But both these teams are not uh, strangers to a 0-0 tie for, his, for almost the entire length of a hockey game. As this is Kenzie Grendler will move it up on the blue line. Bouncing puck, Cammie Larson just can't, well, she does hold it in. Looks like it could barely come out of the zone, but Larson was able to hold it in as it's played around here for Gracie Peterson. Rasmussen will move it out of the zone. Hunsley trying to track it down. Played it at the blue line. And it will be moved by Katie Reese. And now Katie Reese trying to turn with it. Instead, taken back by the Capitals. And Larson fan on a pass attempt. Capitals are in the midst of a change as Hunsley's played it back into the Rangers end of the ice. With 9.30 to go here in the first period. That pass will go across and it'll be taken back by Buffalo. From the blue line, Buffalo with a shot. Save is made and trickles just wide of the goalpost. Qua made the save and it just went inches, maybe an inch wide of the goalpost. As it's played back here for the Rangers. They go two on two back in the neutral zone. Ava Colley will move it in here for the Rangers. That shot and they score! Ava Colley makes it one nothing with 9.06 to go. But Sean Finn make the glove save. And one inch away from a 1-0 lead for the Capitals turns into a 1-0 lead for the Rangers. Yeah, what a turn of events that was. The puck on one end went past Quam, and I almost thought it was on this side of the post, but it just rolled slowly, and the Rangers had, had uh, good speed going up through the neutral zone and right on down. Ava Colley, second of the year, had just one goal, two points in the entire regular season. Gets the first of the state tournament for the Rangers as they lead it 1-0 on the Kubota scoreboard. That centering pass, but Stewart's stick was tangled up with uh, Maya Edmondson. Good job of lifting her stick as this will be moved back in. Unassisted goal, Micah Buffalo with the stick lift. And spinning down one of the Brookings Rangers players. Mallory Lear can't try to pinch in to hold the zone as he'll come back into Dakota McIntaffer with a good back check to get the puck free for the Capitals and swing it around the boards to the near side. 8.30 left to go in the first period. The Rangers have the 1-0 lead. Centering pass, and that shot went wide. By the way, off the outside of the goal. And it'll be for Aubrey Stewart. And the Capitals playing from behind for... They, they, I don't... I know for sure they didn't in the... Uh, road game against the Brookings Rangers but I don't think they were ever trailed to Brookings at all in the two games they played so unfamiliar territory for the Capitals in this hockey game or this season right now as the Caps will be in the midst of a change Buck will come up, Ava Lavinger got a piece of it and we'll pick it up here for the Capitals Lavinger will swing back around, back behind the net Elliot Birch, her pass goes over for Learkamp and we'll move it up ahead for Haley First First in the back end will Push it into the zone where Gracie Peterson will play it for the Rangers. That pass goes up and it'll be out to the blue line and out of the zone for Forrester. And the Rangers can go back two on two with Grendler moving in. Forrester with that shot. And that was a good block there by Elliot Birch and was able to take her girl to the corner. Although that comes to in front a couple times, they score again. It's a 2 nothing lead for the Brookings Rangers with 7.24 to go here in the first period. And it looked like Kenzie Grendler was the one that got it, but we'll see on the replay who might have put that in the back of the net. I don't think it was Grendler the Forrester, way she... Forrester. Yeah. Forrester. So Forrester yep. will score. Her sixth of the year, and Brookings is already up 2-0 with 7.24 to go in the first period. Both Grendler and Forrester are there. No, no support for the Capitals in the weak side of that... No jitters on this team. Yeah. They, <laughs> no Brook, seniors, no juniors, no jitters. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's right. You don't get jitters if you haven't seen it before. <laughs> that's right. 7-14 to go here in the first period, and Brookings has a 2 nothing lead on the, Kubota, on the Kubota scoreboard. Well, you, have to, you have to give a lot of credit to the Brookings Rangers ready to play. Yeah, they, they have those two goals are huge goals to get and force the Capitals not necessarily to play back on their heels yet. 
but he really started to put the pressure on the Capitals to feel like they need to get another one here, or need to get one sooner rather than later, even though we're still in the first period. That pass, I don't know, nearly turned over. Miller with a pass right up the middle of the ice that was played by the Rangers. This will come in front, and that will be taken here by the Capitals. And Bradley Kafka trying to move forward, make that Emily Nemec trying to move forward. Katie Larson now will pick it back up. Pass over for Katie Reitz. So Kali will get the assist. That will be her second point already. She's had two points in the regular season. She's got two points here in the first period of the state tournament. Something about a state tournament that gets <laughs> that, that you just don't know where the points and where the goals are going to come from. Kaylin Hepper, the Aberdeen Cougars, had zero points the entire season and finished with three assists in the game for the Aberdeen Cougars in that 10 0 win. As this will be played back behind the net. Aubrey Stewart trying to find the handle of it. Ava Colley was able to lift the stick as a bouncing puck will come out of the zone from the Rangers. And Mallory Learcamp will have to grab it for the Capitals. Her pass, that one's off the stick, delayed offside by the Rangers, so they'll leave it with 5.50 left to go here in the first period. Capitals are trailing 2-0 to the Brookings Rangers. This is turned back over by the Ranger, from the Rangers, although they lose the handle of it. Stewart up ahead for McIntaffer. That goes off of a stick. McIntaffer trying to race after it to get to the corner. And then a centering pass is broken up as it'll be played back to the far side where Kali will step up but a good pinch by Addie Hunsley to hold the zone. McIntaffer reaching for it. McIntaffer again reaching for it, but it's grabbed by Sawyer Triplett. That puck is tipped, comes out of the zone. Capitals will touch it up, and it will be a delayed, it will be an offside. With 5.14 left to go here in the first period. 2-0, Brookings on top of the Capitals. They have uh, they've they've come out here and made the white capitals a little bit frazzled in this first period. This will be for Bradley Kafka in the neutral zone for the Caps. That pass was blocked by a stick. Elliot Birch will have to play it back to Mallory Learcam, but went too far away from her. So it's going to be wrapped around the boards of the near side where it comes off the stick of Forrester out in front, and the Capitals clear the zone. And it'll be taken back by Brooke Cruz. A couple of uh, sticks, a loose puck. Now Haley first back. She gets partially tripped up. Lavinger, she'll race after it to the corner. Looking for someone to center it to. Comes in front. First, going to get a shot away. Now here's Birch. That shot, that one went wide. Looking maybe in front for Kafka for a tip. And Grindler will wrap it around the boards as it will come back for Elliot Birch to hold the zone. She'll play it back to the corner, but it's taken back by the Rangers. Up from Rasmussen, up ahead for Forrester, who tapped it just too far in front of her. And this will be iced by the Ranger, by the Capitals. Another offensive zone faceoff for the Brookings Rangers with 4.13 to go in the first period. That shift, Briley Kafka was parking herself just outside the crease, and I think that's probably the plan. Let's try to get a touch, shoot it at the net and get a touch or a rebound. 2-0, 4.13 to go here in the first period. Faceoff will be controlled by the Rangers, trying to center that one. Was blocked and now taken back by Larson. Off the boards, trying to get to Katie Reese. On her stick, Reese is in. That shot and a save by Quam. Rebound was still loose. Taken back by Nemec. Nemec a pass back. Quam lost her stick. There's a shot that goes wide as Quam will pick up her stick. Now Quam comes in front. Quam made another save. Couple of players are pushed around the goal. And we get to Larson who can't get out of the crease. As it comes back now for Quam still doesn't have her Miller. Stick. And she'll finally make a glove save to get a whistle. Quam tried to pick up her stick about three different three, times yeah. and there was so much action in front of her, she, she couldn't, couldn't actually it. get a handle on that thing. A, the first initial play, what a good pass from Larson off the boards to Reese to spring her in. And Quam made a save, lost her stick, and then it was a, all heck broke loose pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. As the faceoff will be controlled here by the Rangers. Held in by Dakota McIntaffer. She'll play it back behind the net. Stewart on a backhand. Quam will cover for an offensive zone faceoff for the Capitals with 3.28 left to go here in the first period. Got a little hairy down there, didn't it? But, and that's a, that's a 
a momentum building stop for the Rangers too, because the Capitals are very frustrated that they did not score on that play. There's a shot and saved by Quam, and the rebound. Somehow she got that glove back on top of it with sticks with McIntyre and Stewart right around. Quam was able to put the big mitt right on top of that glove or right on top of the puck. She has not been been overly clean, but she's getting the job done. Rory Quam. <laughs> that face off. That puck was left. There, right at the, the faceoff dot, and then cleared away by the Rangers to just finally escape the zone. Now they bring it back in. Forrester with a shot save is made, rebound. It came back over the top of Forrester as it is going to be played by Buffalo in the far side corner, but still grabbing the Rangers as the Caps are trying to get it out of the zone with 2.55 to go in the first period. Comes out of the zone on a pass, trying to get it back to the point. Now it's grabbed back by Buffalo. Her shot didn't get all of it, but a save made by Quam. The rebound's kicked to the corner. This will be held in by the Capitals. There's a shot attempt that's blocked. Buffalo couldn't get another opportunity with it, and Kirsten Miller back on the blue line for the Capitals. This will be moved back in by Emma Lavinger. Lavinger with the shot that goes wide as the Capitals are in the midst of an offensive zone change. Briley Kafka is able to intercept the puck. Now Kafka back behind the net. Trying to center one. Lavinger got hit from behind and went down. As it's now taken back by the Rangers. But a good stick at the blue line by Addie Hunsley to hold the zone. Comes back and still held in by Kafka. She's got Lavinger in centering. Trying to center to her a couple times. Kafka on the back end. It'll come back over to the near side. Now Kafka will pick it back up. As Jalissa Peterson... Will clear the zone and finally Hunsley will play it back in. Capitals have to get back, back on side with 1.50 to go here in the first period. Haley first will pick it up. Good stick from Peterson. Comes back to Lavinger and the Capitals will get off for another change. Trying to be quick on their change here late in the first period. Jalissa Peterson tipped that one in. Capitals are the delay or the Rangers with the delayed offside as it comes back out of the zone where it's going to be Sawyer Triplet that will try and swing in wide on the right wing. Valerie Leerkamp now will play it back behind the net. Her pass up just behind the skate of Emily Nemec. As that pass will come free. It goes down with 117 to go here in the first period. Capitals have kind of turned the offensive pressure on a little bit, but they're still down 2-0 as they can't find a way to break Rory Quam quite yet. Emily Nemec will turn with it off the boards for Cami Larson. This is played at the blue line. What? And now we're going to get a penalty. Interference is called against the Capitals. With one minute to go in the first period, Kami Larson is going to go for an interference call. Interference right at the blue line as the Caps are trying to carry it into the offensive zone. Well, the, the PA was about to say one minute, and then they had a penalty, <laughs> and he had to go to that first. Yeah. And we're right at the one-minute mark, exactly. Make that Haley first. That will get called for the interference call with one minute to go here in the first period. So a... Pelican Power Sports power play. A big one here for the Brookings Rangers in the final minute as that shot stung one of the Capitol players in Ava Lavinger who blocked that shot. So Haley first gets called for interference. There's a shot looking for a backdoor tip. And this will come out of the zone. The Capitals have a chance to get an odd man break on the shorthanded. Dakota McIntyre for moving in. She's got Reese, a backhander, a save is made. The Nets off is mooring. So the Capitals with the play stopped with 32.4 to go. Capitals get an offensive zone faceoff. Nice individual effort there by Dakota McIntyre. So the Caps, who are now out shooting rookies by five in this first period. Or unfortunately are behind on the scoreboard, 2-0. But it's still power play with 133 to go on the power play. Only 30 seconds remaining here in the first period. And the Rangers will get one more attack up the ice. That one misses for Forrester. Elliott Birch will race it down and then plays it off the glass, but it was played off the Rangers player. Birch then will clear it with 15 seconds to go here in the first period. Stewart trying to race after it. Taken back by Maya Forrester. Let's make that Rasmussen. There's a shot that goes wide with three seconds to go. Capitals will get the puck out of the zone, and that will take us to the end of the first period. 11 to 6 in shots for the, in favor of the Hawaii Capitals, but they're down to 2 0 on the Kubota scoreboard at the end of the first period. We will step aside, come back with the first intermission stats. You're listening to the state tournament on Capital City Rock and on uh, YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports and also uh, in Brookings as well. 
For over 100 years, the Watertown Area Chamber of Commerce has been working to make Watertown and the surrounding area one of the best places in the Midwest to live, work, and raise a family. Watertown is one of the most progressive communities in South Dakota. Watertown is moving forward in so many ways, from construction on their new Watertown Community Foundation Plaza in downtown to a state-of-the-art ice arena. Good luck to all state hockey teams and go Lakers! Congratulations to all of the teams on making the state hockey tournament this weekend. Beck Motor Company is proud to support our area youth in their activities. As Central South Dakota's Chevy dealer for the last 55 years, we've worked hard to create a strong team just like you. And we're here for all of your automotive needs. Call us at 605-224-5912 or visit us online at beckmotors.com. Safe travels from everyone at Beck Motor Company of Pierre. The lawyers at the May Adam Law Firm in Pier know how important your families are to you. If you've been putting off getting your affairs in order, know that the May Adam Law Firm is available to counsel you through your questions and help you get the documents in place so that you've made your loved ones secure. Call them at 224-8803 and they can chat with you about how to document your concerns and care for your family. We're all in this together and the May Adam Law Firm is ready and able to help. Hi, Jason here from Leisure Palace Pool, Spa, and Patio. We invite you to come in and see our expanded new location, 400 West Sioux Avenue and Pier. Transform your new space into the best in industry hot spring, caldera, and free flow spas and let the stress melt away. Or maybe it's an infrared sauna. Don't miss out. Also check out our pool tables, darts, fire tables, and outdoor furniture. Visit us today for the perfect blend of relaxation and entertainment. And as always, at the guaranteed lowest price. Dr. Brian Hermanson serves Central South Dakota with specialty root canal treatment. Hermanson Endodontics aims to provide treatment that is not only comfortable, but has a quality first emphasis. We believe that by preserving as much healthy tooth as possible, we can help you retain your natural teeth longer. This is accomplished with state-of-the-art three-dimensional imaging and the dental operating microscope to guide diagnosis and treatment. Ask your dentist if a root canal specialist is right for you. Hermanson Endodontics, 1709 North Lincoln Avenue in Pier. At Kathy Sunshine Properties, they know the local market, schools, and communities both as agents and neighbors. Let one of the trusted professionals at Kathy Sunshine Properties help you through the buying or selling process. Kathy Sunshine Properties has over 50 years of experience helping people successfully buy or sell their homes. If you're in the market to buy or sell, visit contactkathy.com. Go Capitals! Back here at the uh, Ice Arena as the Hawaii Capitals are down 2-0 on the uh, Kubota scoreboard as a 2-0 lead for the Brookings Rangers over the Hawaii Capitals. John McClure alongside uh, Jim Lloyd and Jeff Anderson. We're also on a KKQQ here this afternoon up in uh, over in Brookings, or I guess from where we're at down in Brookings. Uh, but uh, <laughs> from the from the Capital City, we're over in Brookings. Uh, but we're also on the air on Capital City Rock. And, of course, we're on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. 2-0 lead as Ava Colley and Maya Forrester score the two goals. Colley got two points in that first period with that goal and assist. Two points. She had a goal and assist all season long. She's already got a goal and assist here in the state tournament. Uh, and a big first goal with 9.06 to go in the first period. And then Forrester with 7.24 was able to get that goal, was able to stuff in a rebound. And the Rangers, who only had six shots in that first period, scored on two of them. They've got the upper hand while the Capitals maybe dominate a little bit more in that second part of the first period. The Brick Brickings Rangers have the upper hand going into the second period. I like the pace of the game, though. I think it fits both teams very well. And, and they still have another minute of the power play. And, Jim, this Rangers team, we, we've, we've seen the number three and number two seeds come out with leads. This is the first time we're seeing a lower-seeded team with the lead and, and a lot of confidence coming from that visiting team in this game. Well, yeah, the Brookings Rangers came out ready to play and got two goals, of course, in the first period. But I thought the Capitals really came around in the end of that period where they started getting in the passing lane, starting to push the puck in the offensive zone. So the Capitals have settled in, but they do have to come. They have to find two goals to get even with this Brookings team. You know, we mentioned, too, about how young this Brookings team is, uh, which they still brought back quite a bit. Uh, Kenzie Grendler, uh, Maya, well, Kenzie Grendler, the, the highest scorer with the, the 10 goals from last year. But Rory Quam returned. 
She had the shutouts in the state championship game uh, last year to beat uh, Aberdeen. That's a and, big and, deal. Yeah and, yeah, and you got her in between the pipes. Regardless of how young a team is, when you return a state champion goalie, it, it, it means a lot. And they're they're and Rory Quam has really settled the Rangers down. And, yep. In that mass of humanity at one point late in the first period, the Capitals didn't score. Roy Guam was able to, to, to kind of settle everybody down for Brookings. Well, and she lost her stick, and they had two or three shots at her, and she finally, of course, made a glove save to stop the uh, stop the action. But, yeah, I mean, she didn't have a stick for about three saves. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and trying to find the stick and trying to figure yeah. out where, where it's at and, and where everybody else is at. Yeah, so many the people traffic. in front of her, yeah. yeah. A lot it was of, a tough deal. A lot of well, traffic in front. And you ask your you ask your goalie to keep you in the game, right? Yeah. So eleven shots on eleven shots on goal already. The the Caps are out shooting Brookings, but you have Rory Quam, and she's she's the mainstay there, and she'll keep you in the game uh, for the remainder of the game. You, she'll give her t team a chance to win. Rangers have a two nothing lead over the Y Capitals at the end of the first period. We'll step aside with more of the first submission report after this. You're listening to the State Tournament on Capital City Rock, KKQQ in Brookings, and also on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. Hello, hockey fans. First National Bank and Piers excited to sponsor the 2024 Varsity Hockey State Tournament. Good luck to all the talented players, and a special shout out to our hometown team, the Hawaii Capitals. At First National Bank, we're always on your team and ready with the assist to reach your financial goals. Check us out at firstnationalbanks.com or at First National BNK on Facebook. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. If you're looking for excellence in collision and fiberglass repair, look no further than Hunsley Auto Body and Sandblasting at Fort Pier. Hunsley Auto Body strives for excellence in every job they do, and they have 20 years' experience. Fast, thorough, and quality work is their specialty, and they pride themselves on a job well done. No job is too big for Derek Hunsley. Call them today at 605-280-4451 or check out Hunsley Auto Body Repair and Sandblasting on Facebook to see the work he's done. Hunsley Auto Body and Sandblasting, Fort Pier. Weatherall Roofing and Insulation is a family-owned business that has served Central South Dakota for over 25 years. Weatherall Roofing and Insulation specializes in metal roof restorations and flat roof repair. They also offer the highest quality insulation using closed cell polyurethane foam and blow-in fiberglass. For all your roofing or insulation needs, make Weatherall your first choice. And remember, just foam it! Wagner Auto Company is your complete transportation headquarters. Now is the time to order your new Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles. Plus, a good selection of quality pre-owned and certified pre-owned vehicles. They'll take care of you after the sale with a full-service parts and auto body shop with trained technicians. Along with a friendly financing team that'll work with you to find the best deal and one that'll fit your budget. Wagner Auto is your local full-service family-owned dealership for over 115 years. WagnerAuto.com. That's WagnerAuto.com. When you're in the need for high-quality replacement auto parts, look no further than Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop in Pier. Xander's has been servicing the Pier area for over 40 years. Their professional parts techs can get you the parts you need and get you back on the road. Stop by Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop at 500 West Sioux in Pier or call 224-9221. Xander's, your source for domestic and foreign auto parts and accessories. Back here at the Ice Arena, it is a 2-0 lead for the Brookings Rangers over the Wyatt Capitals at the end of the first period. Earlier today, we've got uh, the first uh, two games completed. Mitchell Marlins, the 3 seed, beat the Rushmore Thunder 5-2 to uh, to advance to Saturday night's game or Saturday evening's game. Aberdeen Cougars, they beat Sioux Center, the 2-7-2 uh, over the 7 seed. 10-0 with a five-goal third period. They had a four-goal first and a five-goal third to win 10-0. So it is 
The six seed Rushmore against the seven seed Sioux Center at 11.30 tomorrow morning. That's our first game of the day. And then at 4.30, we know it's Aberdeen and Mitchell in the state semifinal. Uh, the other two matchups will be decided here in this game and then in the next game as well uh, when the Sioux Falls Flyers take on the Watertown Lakers as uh, it will be a 4.30 puck drive between the Sioux Falls Flyers and the Watertown Lakers. That will be the final game of day number one as we'll have uh, all 11 games here on Capital City Rock and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. It is a 2-0 lead for Brookings. Jeff? Yeah, it's amazing how fast this goes, though. It, it you is. Look at, you look at three days and 11 games, it looks like a lot. And the next thing you know, you've rattled off three games here, just about, uh, one plus or two plus, and uh, then another game time, day one gets by in a hurry. And it's, it's amazing how the fast that time goes. It, it is. Uh, it, we, we build up for this entire season, waiting for this state tournament, and, and all of a sudden when, you, when day one is just about over with, you kind of realize yeah. we're, we're almost halfway done with this tournament. Yeah. That's, that's how, how fast this thing moves. But it is a 2 nothing lead for the Brookings Rangers. We return with the second period coming up after this. You're listening to the state tournament on Capital City Rock, KKQQ, and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day. Sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find your nearest dealer at KubotaOrangedays.com. Pier Regional Airports meets the aviation-related needs of South Dakota State Capitol, its residents, and the businesses of Central South Dakota. Pier Regional Airport is a city-owned public airport that can fly out to any destination that Delta, American Airlines, and United fly seven days a week. So, while you're looking to travel by air, enjoy the convenience of flying out of Pier, where parking is always free. Skip the drive and fly from PIR. Hello, I'm Pastor Jeff Lathrop of Pier First United Methodist Church, and I'd like to invite you to join us in person for worship on Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m. or 11 a.m. You can also join us on Facebook Live or on KCCR 1240 a.m. or 98.9 FM for our Sunday morning broadcast at 11 a.m. Come worship with us at First United Methodist Church where you will find open hearts, open minds, and open doors. AGE Corporation has been building South Dakota for nearly 60 years. For all your site work, construction, and crane needs, AGE is there for you. If you need a boat dock and dock lighting, AGE has what you need. Visit their website, agecorp.com, or give them a call at 223-2732. AGE Corporation, providing high-quality services without sacrificing safety. Visit agecorp.com or call 223-2732. Ferting Electric has a long history of doing electrical work the right way. Economical service, professional work, and customer satisfaction is why they can say that. Ferting Electric can do residential, farm, and commercial projects. Doesn't matter if they are charged with new construction or a remodel project, they get it conducted. Contact the staff at Ferting Electric at 224-8684. They can light a spark into your next project. Ferting Electric, 224-8684. If you're looking for a new or used Toyota car, truck, or SUV, you'll find it at Capital City Toyota in Pierre. We know you're well-educated when researching your next vehicle. Capital City Toyota has made it easy to get all the available vehicle information so you can spend less time researching and more time enjoying your new purchase. As a premier Toyota dealer, they have a huge selection of new and used vehicles to choose from. To see their full vehicle lineup, visit their website, CapitalCityToyota.com. Congratulations to all state hockey teams. Start of the second period, the Hawaii Capitals are down 2 0 on the Kubota scoreboard. The Rangers still having a minute left on the power play as well to start this second period, and the Rangers won the first minute. Jeff, you always say first minute goals are well, really tough to give up. Yep, first two minutes of a period to me, the last two minutes are key. And if the Rangers yeah. do get a power play goal being in that first minute, that's a backbreaker goal to give up. 
The last time the Capitals played their last varsity game, they gave up a goal to Aberdeen in the final second, and they also then in the second period gave up a goal in the first minute. And so those, and they lost four to one. You take away those two goals, it's a two-one game yeah. down the stretch. So this, this is very key. The next goal has got to be for the Capitals to stay in this hockey game. Not, not that they can't come back with a three nothing lead, but it's awfully tough to come back with a three nothing lead or a three nothing deficit, especially when you're playing the state champion Brookings Rangers, especially with the Roy Quaman goal. You, you got to have the next one. Yeah. Three, three yeah. goal lead is not what you want to see for the range uh, for the for the Capitals. And so, you really have to kill this penalty. Yeah, that, that's first thing first is to get that minute gone by in this second period to make it back to five on five. As we are underway here in the second period, it is the Rangers. A pass goes over. That one just misses for Jalissa Peterson after Aubrey Stewart got a piece of it. Then Dakota McIntyre. These two have been on the penalty kill a lot over the course of the season, along with Elliot Birch and Mallory Learcamp, the two defensemen. Jim Wadeen, the head coach for the Capitals, really likes the the effort that McIntyre and Stewart have every time Kunal Pelly. There's a shot on and a save made by Pashong as Sawyer Triplett had that one open, and there's a puck that will go out of play. And with 6.24 left to go here in the second period, puck gets flipped right back in from the crowd. Hockey headquarters could get you a new puck if somebody kept that, I would guess. <laughs> was, was it last year, two years ago? We were trying to figure out how much they cost. Yeah, yeah, we got it figured out. I believe it was Nick Marso for the for the Capitals that uh, ended up texting me and telling me exactly how much uh, it costs for per puck. This will be out to the blue line, so held in by the Rangers. That one a shot and stick by Pashong to the corner with still eight seconds to go on the power play. Lear Camp over here on the near side. It is taken back by Rasmussen. Now another shot, another save by Pashog. Capitals will get back to full strength. Another shot on save made, juggled by Pashog with the stick. And it's still taken by the Rangers. A backhander that misses by about 10 feet, goes to the corner. And it's going to be taken by Aubrey Stewart. Back in, will get it out of the zone as it'll be taken here by Dakota McIntyre. McIntyre from the blue line gets a shot on and a save made by Quam, but it will give the Capitals an opportunity to have an offensive zone faceoff with 15 and 38 to go. And a couple of saves. There's that nice little juggling uh, puck there from uh, Sophia Pashong. 15 38 to go in an offensive zone faceoff here the Capitals. Both five on five play, though. Yes, yeah, and that, that's first, first thing is checked off the list, and that is. The fact that you got the penalty killed off. Second now thing to try and check off the list is getting back within one goal. As is Kirsten Miller on the faceoff win. That shot goes off the glass. It'll come back here on the nearest side, up the boards. And now taken back by the Rangers as they'll get it back out of the zone. And now bring it back in the offensive end. Sawyer Triplett moves in. Triplett in, a shot in the same way. The rebound is loose, and it's turned aside by the Capitals. Lavinger with Kafka. That pass just a bit too far. And now back to Lavinger. And on side as Riley Kafka was able to toe the line and able to get down on one leg to make sure she stayed on side. The Rangers, though, have it back on the far side of the ice. And a good stick there from Miller. Had held it in for a moment. And now the Rangers will move it back into the offensive end. It'll come back here on the near side as that puck is on edge. Grabbed back by the Capitals. Hunsley up the boards for Kafka. And then the Rangers who are delayed offside. As Grendler went down to block a pass. And another block pass there from Grendler. And Kenzie Grendler will move it in. Good stick from Hunsley. As now Kafka will turn with it. Riley Kafka to her forehand. Trying to move it in the offensive end. She goes down along with one of the Brookings players and Kenzie Grendler. They both get right back up on the ice. And they'll be moved up ahead as they'll be now taken here by Kirsten Miller. It'll be taken back again as Haley first. Kenzie Grendler into the near side. Cami Larson and Grendler again. That pass will come to the front, and then it will be a save by Sophia Pashong. That was a good place for that. To grab that puck and hang on. 14.06 left to go here in the second period. Faceoff will be to the left of Pashong. Best game of the day, I think, so far. Well, they, the Capitals are going to have to try and make it uh, the, the, the best day, game of the day because they got to get back in this game down by two right now. 14 minutes to go here in the second period. Rangers are looking for that next one, smelling some blood in the water right now as Mallory Learcamp will pick it up for the Capitals. They break out in the neutral zone. Learcamp plays it off the boards. She'll race after it. 
As it'll be played around here to the near side for the Capitals to take, or for the Rangers to take, with 13.40 to go here in the second period. This will be moved back into the offensive end. Sawyer Triplett trying to get a centering pass or a shot. Elliot Birch was able to seal her off. Triplett went down the ice. Ava Colley now trying to pick it back up. And Birch was able to recover. For Cami Larson, up for Nemec off of her stick. And now tipped along by Reese, but she never got the handle on it. It'll be played back around. Two Rangers players run into each other. As they go down the ice, they're both a little slow to get up. And now it comes back here for Cami Larson, one of the two seniors for the Capitals. Cami Larson and Elena Youngblood, the two, only two seniors for the Capitals on this year's team. With 13 minutes to go here in the second period. Back into the neutral zone. The Rangers off the stick of Jalissa Peterson. And then played back in the neutral zone again. Miller is able to stop the puck. And Kenzie Grendler will try and move it back ahead, but Miller's stick is there another time. They will wave off icing. With 12.35 to go here in the second period. Capitals are really wanting that next goal right now to make it a 2-1 score. Buffalo will turn with it. That shot never got to the net. Rangers have closed the, closed the gap in shots on goal. As they've picked up 11 now, the Capitals with 12. As Micah Buffalo turns around with a slap shot that goes over the top of the cage. And the Capitals with a delayed offside let the puck go so they can get back onside. And it will be coming all the way back down behind the net. Pearson Miller will play it up the boards. Rangers in the midst of a change. Stepping on the ice was Maya Edmondson. And when she did, she was able to stop the puck in its track. And now a turnover. Bradley Kafka tried to make one extra move. Lavinger was trailing her. And the Capitals never got a shot away. I think Kafka was thinking that she could go to her backhand. But she ended up going right into the defensive player. As Kafka now will pick it back up. Trying to center one again for the Capitals. Kafka centers one. Lavinger with a shot and a save. Rebound and it will turn to the corner. Back here on the near side. Out of the zone by the Rangers. It is Ava Colley. Colley moves in. That centering pass first got back and it comes on net anyway. And Pashong will have to cover for a whistle. With 11.21 to go here in the second period. Capitals getting a few looks, but not real good looks. They're, they're pushing it to the goal, but they actually need to get some quality shots. Face off to the right of Pashong. Get a couple of players trying to figure out exactly if they're supposed to be on the ice or not as Katie Reese will move it in up the offensive zone, out of the defensive zone for the Capitals. And it'll be played back here now for Brindley Peterson. Now it's Kirsten Miller. Around the boards it comes to the far side. It will come out of the zone to be taken back by the Rangers. That pass back for Brindley Peterson again. And she'll swing it back in the zone. It'll be taken here back by Miller on the far side corner. But then the pass was blocked. Now a centering pass for Brindley Peterson, but never got a shot away. As Larson stepped in front of that chance and then sent down by Emily Nemec. And that will result in icing with 10.38 to go here in the second period. And mentioned about Mallory Learcamp, but never got a chance to actually talk about it. She missed last year's state tournament with an injury. Uh, so they were already down one defenseman. Obviously been back this year. And they still are down a defenseman. Brenna Ullman uh, has uh, had surgery on her knee, and so she is out for the rest of the season, obviously, and will have to come back next year. So the Caps can't seem to stay away from the injury bug when it comes to the state tournament, especially when it comes to the defenseman as well. As this will be back behind the net as Micah Buffalo will pick it up. Buffalo couldn't get the handle on it. Now it's turned back over. Sawyer Triplett, a backhander. That's blocked by Learcamp. Now it's Dakota McIntaffer, a pass trying to go across for Stewart. Went off of a stick, and then Stewart couldn't send it into the zone. Although it does still come in the offensive end. Micah Buffalo, it'll come out of the zone back for Elliot Birch. Her pass will go across for Learcamp, misses that pass. And there's a battle for on the far side boards. Coming free out of it was Learcamp for a moment, but the puck just got away from her too quick. And this will be sent down. They will wave off icing, so in saying that Birch could have played it. Now in the midst of a change for the Rangers, and that's intercepted. Sawyer Triplett, that shot, that's blocked by Learcamp. And it's grabbed by McIntyre for up for Buffalo, but not out of the zone. 
There's a shot that goes through and able to cover with Pashong as that one went to her left. It might have been just a little bit farther than Roy Quams in the first period, but it was still pretty close to right next yeah, to that That surprised post. her. She had a little rebound to herself there. That surprised her. And we didn't even really mention that in the first intermission, that how close it was for the Capitals to have a one nothing lead, at least from our angle. When Qua made that first save, there's a shot that goes just wide. That if that goes in the back of the net, it's a one nothing lead. Oh, that's a penalty coming up against the Rangers, or against the Capitals. Yep. A hook is called. You it's, never, uh, no, it's against, it is against the Rangers. So Rasmussen so the, hit the boards thinking that may have been where the penalty was called, but it was called prior to that. It's, right. Yeah, so well, I, didn't, I didn't see the penalty prior to that. I just saw, saw Rasmussen going to the boards, and you never know what the call is going to be when they go into the boards like that. It could be a, more of a severe call, but it was a hook prior to, to all that. So 9.26 to go. The Capitals will have their first power play where they are 17.4% on the season. Brookings was coming in at 26.9%, second in the league. The Capitals are fifth in the league at 17.4%. And Addison Addison was the one that took the penalty. So it'll go all the way down the ice to the Rangers to start this penalty kill. The Rangers are killing off 83.3% of penalties against. The Capitals will break out to center ice. Addison Hunsley. Hunsley carries in the offensive end. Not shot. That got through to save made by Quam. Rebound is loose. That one will be to the wide of the net. Capitals are trying to find where that's at near the legs of Kafka. And then sent all the way back down by the Rangers. This will be played by Pashong to the corner. Lavinger will pick it up. Makes a nice move around Sawyer Triplett. Leaves it for Haley first, but then that pass is intercepted. And now it's Triplett that will send it to the net and a save made by Pashong. And we get a whistle with 8.41 to go here in the second period. Still a minute 15 left on the power play for the Capitals. The Pelican Power Sports power play. Pashon was looking for a, a cover there, but she actually didn't have that covered. And I think Triplett was the only one that knew it wasn't. She was waiting for a whistle just in time. Like a Buffalo take the face off. Faceoff will be controlled here by the Capitals. It is Birch up ahead for Stewart off of her skate. Kenzie Grendler will send it all the way back down again. The Capitals will have to retreat another time with a minute to go on the power play. Trying to get there, get something set up here offensively. Elliot Birch, she's got plenty of speed. She'll use it, skating in the offensive end. Birch to the corner now, trying to center one in front. Comes in front, the Capitals couldn't get a shot away. It'll be all the way down. Pashong will play it back over to the corner. Learcamp will turn with it. With 40 seconds to go on the power play. Capitals can go three on two into the offensive zone of the power play. Micah Buffalo will have to go to the corner to retrieve it. She's got McIntaffer in front. Back out of the blue line. Learcamp with a shot and a save. And on the doorstep was Stewart. Make that McIntaffer. Uh, Stewart was. And it'll come back around. 20 seconds to go on the power play. McIntaffer. Trying to center one. Comes in front, and they score! It is in! I don't know if it was Buffalo or McIntyre that will score, but the Caps, they make it a 2-1 game. And it will be McIntyre that does get the goal, her third of the season. Looked like the puck just kind of squirted around Quam there. It was a decent shot to start with. She stopped it initially and just had enough momentum to go across that red line. Big power play goal there for the Capitals. And with 7.43 to go in the second period, they got the goal they needed. They, they, they're two for two at what they need to do in this second period, and that was kill off the penalty and get the first goal of this period. So it's a 2-1 hockey game now on the Kubota scoreboard. This is a brand, not so much a brand new hockey game. They're one shot away from making it a brand new hockey game. With 7.25 to go here in the second, the Rangers. Up the boards, see if the Capitals can gain some more momentum off of that power play goal. It went off of one of the Brookings Rangers players, skates, and then it was taken off of Quam and in the back of the nets, as that was swing back to the front of the nets by Katie Reese. Buffalo will get the lone assist. So Buffalo, who had just one assist all season, gets her first assist in the state tournament. McIntyre gets her fifth point of the year. Scored both of her goals in one hockey game and now has a goal on the power play. The laid off side now is going to be moved up here by the Capitals. Cami Larson trying to move it back in for the Caps. Into the corner it comes. 
And it's played back here by the Rangers. Up the boards. Comes to the blue line. Hunsley trying to settle it down, but now it's coming back the other way. As Lavinger was able to get over. Nice play by Lavinger to take it away from Forrester. Now the Capitals, Hattie Hunsley picking up speed in the neutral zone. She'll bring it in the offensive end. Hunsley with a shot that goes wide. 6-18 to go here in the second period and a 2-1 goal score. Haley first trying to center one. Now it's back for Lavinger. Her shot in the, that one was blocked. Kafka was calling for in the middle of the ice. Now Kafka again trying to move around a, a couple different players and it will come out of the zone. And it's going to be a race for it. Capitals have to get back to it. And it will be Learkamp that was able to get a stick to it. Trying to center one for Triplett. And it's still played back. Colley over for Triplett. Intercepted by Hunsley. Triplett will get it back in the corner. And she will play the puck into the corner. And we get a little bit of a slowdown and a little bit of a breather, but it's taken back by the Rangers who get a shot away. Rebound, and that shot went wide. Ava Colley had, had blocked the first shot from her own teammate, but then had a really good look at it to get a second opportunity. Here is first up ahead for Kafka, just behind her. She's late on a shift. She's going to get off the ice, and the Capitals will have to play it back in their own end. First will push it around the boards of the far side. Birch for first. And this will be iced by Haley First with 5.13 to go here in the second period. Capitals are, are okay just to ice that puck right there. I think they're feeling in their legs needed a change pretty bad. 17 to 14 in shots. 2-1 lead for the Brookings Rangers on the Kubota scoreboard. Face off to the right of Sophia Pashong. It is... Elliot Birch trying to get the puck out of the zone. Picked back up here by McIntaffer. Now for Stewart. And the Capitals had a chance to maybe go two on one, but puck went too far away from either Buffalo and Stewart. Now here's Buffalo back again from the blue line. We'll throw it in. A save made by Quam. That one kind of almost ate her up a little bit up to the stick. Here's Buffalo again trying to get the puck to settle down for a shot. And now it's three on two for the Rangers coming back. Pushed in by Forrester. Although she lost the handle, of the, or she pushed it in and pushed it too far away. Comes back to Forrester now. Face off dot shot and a save is made. And the Rangers who are about to make a change. The puck comes out of the zone and Brookings will have to tag back up. And it'll be Matter of Learcamp that will pick it back up here for the Capitals. Didn't get all that pass. Does come out of the zone. Rangers will have to tag back up again. And now it's taken here by Elliot Birch with 4.15 to go here in the second period. Birch picking up some speed. Has the neutral zone and has the offensive zone again. Birch into the corner, centering one, but McIntyre had her stick canceled out. Good stick from Micah Buffalo on the back check. Learkamp moves it back up ahead for Buffalo. And it'll be played back again by the Rangers. And a pass that will go across. Learkamp racing after it. Capitals, Learkamp has got to get, find her way to get off the ice here. You can tell that she's... A little leg tired right now. Miller will backhand it, swing it around. Larson will pick it up. Kami Larson up ahead for McIntyre. Now back for Larson again. And now grabbed by the Rangers as the Capitals will finish out their change to get their next line out there. Sawyer Triplett swings in. That shot rebound and off the stick of Colley. Otherwise, Colley might have had an open net. Back the other way. Nemec with a shot. Save is made by Quam. To the corner it comes. The Rangers will get it right back out into the neutral zone. They go three on two. Back in here is Forrester. Left it. Nemec picks it up. Couldn't get that pass over for Kafka. Now we'll try and swing it back over for Kafka. And then Nemec and Kafka both running into each other. And falling to the ice was Forrester. A little bit of help from Emily Nemec. And it will be sent down. It will not be an icing. They wave off icing, saying the Rangers could have played it. And now back into the corner. The Rangers will play it back here to the near side. It is the Capitals in the battle for here on the near side corner. That is Addie Hunsley for the Capitals, along with Haley first. The puck will make its way to the blue line. The Capitals, that was out of the zone, so they'll tag back up. And as they tag back up, Kafka nearly intercepted a pass. This will be far enough for an icing. And we will get a whistle with 2.22 to go here in the second period. Are we in the second period or the third period? The way, the way the energy is in this building right now, it feels like it's the third period. Yeah, yeah, these two teams have really picked it up in this second period. Face off will be to the left of uh, Roy Quam. Lavinger 
think they'll try and maybe win it back and see if they can get Riley Kafka a shot. Although it's won by the Rangers on the faceoff. Buck was starting to come out to the blue line. It comes out of the zone, and the Rangers can go two on one. Hunsley trying to get over to it with the stick lift. That was a two on zero, oh, and Pashong makes the save. Oh. Triplett and Jalissa Peterson were both over there. Triplett took the shot, and Pashong makes a huge save on a two on zero. Oh. Hunsley lifted the stick a couple times, but they had a two on zero oh that Pashong, boy, was. That's a huge save and a big confidence builder for the oh. Capitals and Pashong late in the second period. And Triplett and Peterson were looking at each other after that one and saying, what could we have done different? This one comes off the end of the boards. That was a weird carom off that almost came in front of the net. It was cleaned up by the Capitals. Now the puck comes out of the zone. That's a two-on-one with Kafka and Hunsley. Kafka swings in, trying to center one, but it went off the skate. Didn't get the pass away. With 1.50 to go here in the second period. Haley first. That shot goes high. Goes back to the blue line. Miller with her shot. That one is a, goes wide again of Quam. And it'll be cleared to the blue line, but not out of the zone as it's held in by first. Kafka now will turn back with it. Can she get to her forehand? She does. That shot and a save by Quam. The rebound was popped up in the air. And out of the corner it comes and out of the zone. And that should be an icing. And it will be against the Rangers with 1.22 to go here in the second period. And the energy continues to build in this oh, building yeah. and on the ice with these two teams. We knew, we kind of figured it was going to be this way, but there's no give right now in either one of these teams. Faceoff will be to the left of Quam. Micah Buffalo will take the faceoff. It is one back. Birch with a shot. That went wide, trying to stuff it in. A couple players are all tumbling behind the ice. There's three different players that are down, and the puck will come free back in the to the high slot, but no one there for the Capitals. But two of the players back behind the behind the goal had been knocked down. Two players for the Capitals, one player for the Rangers that were on the ice. Buffalo will play it up. That will be swung out by Stewart. They're going to wave off icing, saying it was touched by Brookings with 50 seconds to go here in the second period. It'll come back around to the far side boards and out of the zone where it's going to be grabbed by Leerkamp. Capitals will have to tag back up. Rangers leave it in their zone for a moment. And it will be now Dakota McIntaffer instead taken back by Otteson. Otteson looking to maybe center one. Good positioning by Birch. Bumper off the puck. And it comes to the blue line where Buffalo nearly got it out of the zone. It does come out with 24 seconds left to go here in the second period. This will be no icing. They'll wave it off in the last second. And it's grabbed back by Brookings with 15 seconds to go. Elliott Birch will turn with it with 12. At the blue line, walking in, Reese with a shot. Off the goal post! They try to stop it in, they score! It is tied at two! Off the post, you have to check out that one on the uh, replay. That thing hit the post I don't and know. just stopped in the crease. There it was. Emily Nemec will score to tie it up. She came into the rebound. And We're going to see it again. With six seconds to go, got the rebound to tie it up. It almost looked like Quam got, her, got herself on that line before the puck, but I think her and the puck slid right in. So now we've got a game. Now we're back to square one. Yeah. It's a 2-2 hockey game. With six seconds to go, Emily Nemec will pick up goal number four of the season. And the second period will come to an end. And we are tied two to two. The Rangers score two in the first. The Capitals score two in the second. And we've got ourselves a hockey game going into the third period. Did we know it was going to be this way? Oh, we, we, we thought maybe it could be this way. <laughs> but what a, what a game this has been so far. You're listening to Casey Sir FM1, KKQQ Brookings. Two to two, our score. We'll return with a second remission after this. You're listening to a y, or you're listening to the state tournament on Capital City Rock, and you're watching it on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports, as well as also listening on KKQQ. So surprising. So much fun for everyone. So not what you expected. So much more to explore. So much to see, hear, smell, taste, enjoy. So out there, yet so close. So pack your bags, fill the tank, grab the kids, tell the dog. What are you waiting for? There's so much Brookings, so little time. 
If you're looking for a new or used Toyota car, truck, or SUV, you'll find it at Capital City Toyota in Pier. We know you're well-educated when researching your next vehicle. Capital City Toyota has made it easy to get all the available vehicle information so you can spend less time researching and more time enjoying your new purchase. As a premier Toyota dealer, they have a huge selection of new and used vehicles to choose from. To see their full vehicle lineup, visit their website, CapitalCityToyota.com. Congratulations to all state hockey teams. Ferding Electric has a long history of doing electrical work the right way. Economical service, professional work, and customer satisfaction is why they can say that. Ferding Electric can do residential, farm, and commercial projects. Doesn't matter if they are charged with new construction or a remodel project, they get it conducted. Contact the staff at Ferding Electric at 224-8684. They can light a spark into your next project. Burning Electric, 224-8684. Venture Communications is excited to be a sponsor for the 2024 Boys and Girls State Hockey Tournaments. Good luck to all our talented players. Venture Communications has deep roots in rural South Dakota. Venture now proudly provides fiber to the home to 100% of our customers, enabling them to enjoy super fast and reliable internet connections. Call us today at 605-852-2224. That's 605-852-2224. Or look us up online at VentureCom.net. Best of luck to all the athletes in the 2024 State Boys and Girls Hockey Tournaments. If you're looking for excellence in collision and fiberglass repair, look no further than Hunsley Auto Body and Sandblasting at Fort Pier. Hunsley Auto Body strives for excellence in every job they do, and they have 20 years' experience. Fast, thorough, and quality work is their specialty, and they pride themselves on a job well done. No job is too big for Derek Hunsley. Call them today at 605-280-4451 or check out Hunsley Auto Body Repair and Sandblasting on Facebook to see the work he's done. Hunsley Auto Body and Sandblasting, Fort Pier. Your home and business are important to you and you need quality furnace and air conditioning products and service. With a combined 50 plus years of experience, AirTech Heating and Cooling provides you with just that service. Call 945-0160 for sales, service, and installation of furnaces, air conditioning, and heat pumps. AirTech Heating and Cooling features the American Standard products. Sales, installation, and service. You want the best and that's what you'll find at AirTech Heating and Cooling and Pier. As we welcome you back here, it is a 2-2 score at the end of uh, two periods. In that second period, Dakota McIntyre got a power play goal to make it 2-1 with 7.43 to go. It was six seconds left. Emily Nemec got the shot off the rebound to tie it up to make it 2-2 to two to two off the uh, shot from uh, Katie Reese. And we are tied 2-2. Two to two. Uh, Jim Lloyd, you've got yourself a special guest coming up here, uh, getting ready to talk to him. Yeah, we have Gary Weckworth, and that's going to get him outfitted here and Gary, have a seat there with us if you want. Have a seat. Gary Wickworth, thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to come talk just a little bit of hockey in Watertown. What's going on with hockey in Watertown nowadays? I'm not sure. Is there something new going on or is it? Well, there's this building on the <laughs> on the east end of town. I don't know. What is that building anyway? It's pretty cool, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Boy, the Prairie Lakes uh, Ice Arena is really something. And it's been the buzz for about two weeks now. It's been, uh, well, actually, it's probably been longer than that, but, you know, just for the, for the time of building it and seeing the construction going on and, you know, yeah. it's, that it's going to be reality in the community because look how long Watertown's been talking about having something to replace the existing facility. Yeah. I mean, it's been, I mean, you've been around here longer than me probably. And yeah. It's been a forever. It has and been. So you know, it's been. It's, we've been talking about this for about 25 years. You know, and Gary, you've been involved in sports at lots of different levels and hockey at lots of different levels. So, so when you put a building in an arena like this, like the Prairie, Prairie Lakes uh, Ice Arena, what does this mean to a community? The, what What you're going to see is, and I think they're already seeing it, even though it's been a couple weeks, um, the infusion of kids that want to be engaged in the sport, and and not only that, but the pride that the existing kids have being able to come out in the ice and play on something as nice as this. And so, you know, we saw it in Sioux Falls when we created the Stampede and, you know, the guys built the Shields Ice Plex down there. Um, it's just, it, 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 it injects uh, some, so much energy into the program that um, more kids want to play. They just, you know, it's, it's, it's just exposure to it. And for mom and dads to be able to come out and have a decent place to sit and hang out and not freeze yeah, their tail yeah. off and, and it's not a hassle. And, you know, like I grew up in a community. I didn't play hockey where I grew up because it was we didn't have indoor ice. Right. And so now to have kids to have a facility like this, 
it's going to create so much more energy and to be able to hopefully have ice year round, at least one sheet of ice here yep. year round. Uh, you know, camps and clinics and, and all kinds of different things. Just open skates, open hockeys. I mean, it's just, it's like, you know, kids playing basketball or baseball. If you can get on a field, you got a ball and glove or you got a hoop you can shoot at, you become a better player. Yeah. And so it's just the, the opportunity that the kids are going to have to be able to uh, learn the sport, become good at the sport, and, and bring their friends along and just, you know, you know, pump up the numbers and just have you know more people playing. Right, and 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 this was this was an effort by a lot of people. Of course, the city of Watertown stepped up with both feet, and and then the the community how they've rallied around this thing for several years. And finally, in the community, it got to the point where hey, we are going to build this one way or another. It's going to happen. And boy, did people step up. You know, a lot of credit goes out to Reed Holine, the mayor of Watertown, who really took took a risk and came out and just said, we're going to do this. Yeah. And, and just got the ball rolling and explained how it was going to get done. And then he was able to engage people in the community that also believed in it and, you know, put the onus on the people because it is truly a private a public partnership uh, to make it work. And so you've got uh, $10 million of the facility was raised by the public. Yeah. And so Wh which is unheard of, unheard of, unreal yeah. that, that they were able to do that. And so, I mean, that, that covered a third of the cost, which is, you know, so hard today. Yeah. And uh, so it's, um, you know, for that in itself, to be able to have the, the community of Watertown rally around this, and everybody put in from anywhere for 100 bucks to a million bucks yep. to make this yep. thing happen, or above that even with Prairie Lakes being the naming sponsor. But, uh, yeah, it was just a rallying cry for everybody to get together and say, hey, let's make this happen. Yeah. And uh, I was surprised by how relative with relative ease that it came together yeah. the yeah. 10 million anyway well so. and i think it got to the point where the community they wanted this facility yes and, and everybody stepped up to do it now now there's another component that that's coming along it, it, it's a juniors team we're so yeah. close to a juniors team you've been involved in juniors teams you bring in a team like that from a juniors team what what does that do now does it what does that give you the next step that is the next step and so um, you know, we saw that when we started the Stampede. You know, I was also uh, involved with starting the Canaries, so I saw it on the baseball side. And so, um, you know, it's going to, it, the, the little kids that come out and play are, are aspire to be that next level. And they're going to be able to see the level of play at uh, the North American Hockey League. They're going to be able to see what it takes to, for them to achieve to that level and what work they're going to have to put in to be able to play at that level and or above. And so um, I think, you know, the Stampede has helped that already. Yep. You know, Brookings has had a team for a while. Aberdeen has been very successful with their program. And so, you know, a lot of people have been exposed to the junior hockey uh, level of play. But, you know, for the kids of Watertown and the area, I mean, to be able to physically see it yeah. and, and watch how these kids play and the intensity and the level that they're at, um, that's going to take it to the next step for them yeah. too. So, so tell us a little bit about junior junior hockey. There, there's several tiers, and, and I mean, we don't know who's coming. I mean, the common person doesn't know. But what what kind of level of hockey, junior hockey, do you get here in Watertown? So the junior team, proposed team, is going to be in the North American Hockey League, which is the same level as as the Aberdeen Wings. Okay. And so that's there's three levels of junior hockey in the United States: tier one, two, and three. So the Stampede in the United States Hockey League is, and Fargo Force are, you know, Tier 1. Sioux mm -hmm. City Musketeers, Omaha Lancers, all that. So that's your Tier 1 junior hockey. And then Tier 2 is the next level, which is the North American Hockey League. And then there's Tier 3 is where you got AAA programs and stuff around the country. And so, you know, we'll be middle of the pack here. And that's only because... You know, the economics of putting a USHL team in water, it doesn't work. I mean, there's right. just not enough seats. You've you got to be able to sell. You've got to have a community that can support it financially with sponsorships and season ticket purchases. And we're just not big enough to do that. But a North American League team is perfect for a community of this size. So, so we get a team that fits the community. Yep. And the, the, the ownership is, is engaged in the community, and it, it fits. Yes. And so... You know, being, you know, again, it's a quality of life issue. It's a quality of life component as well for the community to be able to have 
another entertainment venue because mm -hmm. really when it comes right down to it, a lot of people aren't going to care about the game, but they will right. over time. Yep. They'll they'll be in, engaged with the team and follow the standings and want them to win every time. And But it's going to be entertainment. I mean, it's something else to do in the community. Coming out and have a few beers with your friends, having a good time, cheering on the local team. Yep. It, it drives uh, people to restaurants. It drives businesses to ho or things to hotels. It just drives things to Watertown in the area. It, and, and so and it's this, all part And of this the building picture. itself, it's going to look different than what it was today. The, 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 the team will, will do their sponsorship, yep, and they'll, yep. they'll engage the community and, and the business yeah, owners and so forth. There's no signage, yeah, you know, because right, it's right. too new yet. Um, you know, they'll have their, whatever te the team name is going to be with their logos yeah. and all that stuff will be. Yeah. It'll be their branded. venue. When yes. you come in, yep. it'll be their venue. It'll be all, all about them. When you yes. come on a Friday, Saturday night to watch the game, it'll, it'll be an entertainment package of their own. And, and I'm I'm jacked up about because I think you know just to have that natural rivalry with Aberdeen. Oh yeah, is it fantastic. Will. Yeah, you know, and so uh, so it's just a lot of things like that will just be really good. There's a, there's amenities here for those that want to spend a little bit more money and entertain clients and customers yep. you know, for businesses. So it just adds a lot of different things to the whole makeup from a, a business economic situation for the community and just for the social aspects as well. Yeah. So maybe a traveling trophy between the, 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 I wonder, the that's Aberdeen a good idea. and here. Yeah, we, what, we could probably do that. What would you call it? You know, it's just like, <laughs> we'll come up with something. Yeah. So, yeah, but it, it's going to be a neat thing. And so it's just this, this venue is perfect for that. It's a perfect venue. All right. Well, Gary Weckworth, I appreciate you coming by. We're going to carry on and try to get on with this uh, third period. What a great hockey game we have going on. I see that. Yeah. And I appreciate you coming up and giving us your insight because you've been there and done it it's it, i think it's going to be a fun thing for everybody i appreciate your time and what yeah. you guys are doing for hockey in south yeah. dakota and uh, i hope it's a great tournament all, all, all right. weekend long so gary weckworth i appreciate Thanks, you coming Jimmy. up thank you we will uh step away just for a second here for a little bit we're going to come back and we're going to give you this third period what a game we're, we're not going to come back we're, we're not going to come back we're going to stay, stay. Here. We're gonna all stay right here. john says we're staying we're, we're staying we're, 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 we're staying because we got two minutes uh, <laughs> until the uh, third period starts so all right, we'll, we'll, so. we'll get uh, let, let's talk a little bit about this game here real quick 23 17 in shots in favor of the uh y capitals two to two on the kubota scoreboard and jeff We'll start with you because we, we, I get the same question to ask both of you guys, but do you want the Capitals or the Rangers? I don't care. You don't care? We're going we're to give you the Capitals. What do the Capitals need to do to, to pick up a win in this hockey game? I think they need to get the, the puck on the stick of Kafka and probably Buffalo a little bit more on, on the kids that can put the puck in the net. So now for the Brookings Rangers, what do they need to do to pick up the win here? Well, I'll tell you what. They need to get a little momentum back. They had their momentum in that first period. Yeah. Slowly the Capitals chipped away at it in that second period. They need to come out fast and get some momentum on their side. Now, I think both teams will agree that, you know, obviously each team wants to win their hockey, win this hockey game. But I think both teams agree that they want to win in regulation. Because if you get to go play the, <laughs> the winner of this game, we'll play the winner of Sioux Falls in Watertown. Yes. And if it is the Sioux Falls Flyers that you're playing, you do not want to have to have an overtime game before you have to go take on the Sioux Falls Flyers. So while both teams will agree on who's supposed to win this game or who should win this game, I think they both would agree, let's win it in regulation and not have an overtime game. Well, the, the good thing is, is it's tournament time and somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to win. One of these two teams are going to win real soon. We, we know there will be a winner. We, we, the last double overtime game we had, the last overtime game was in the uh, Boys State Tournament last year. Yes. I think it was Mitchell and Watertown played yes. that uh, overtime game. And then the last double overtime game was the Hawaii Capitals and the Rushmore Thunder and Boys Hockey. And, and don't forget, now this, uh, this is years ago, the longest yes. game in South yeah. Dakota history. That's right. Capitals and the Lakers, seven overtimes. That's right. Yeah. It, that, and then, we, I hope we don't get to that <laughs> at, at any point, whether it's this game, whether any game, we, we don't need that. We, seven we, overtime. We'd have to take a couple, probably six breaks in seven overtime, wouldn't well, we? Well, we'd have at least a couple of uh, Zam opportunities. To That's take right. Breaks. But both teams are back out on the ice. No overtime. And, and <laughs> both coaches are saying that. But well, maybe they, maybe they're not so much saying it to their team, but they're both thinking it. No overtime. <laughs> no overtime. Let's win it in regulation. That, well, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a good third period if it, if it goes on like it did in the end of that second period. Hang on to your hats because it's gonna cruise right along. 
if, if Jim Wadine and Jacoby Anderson don't get don't think about the same thing ever, this is the one time they're going to think about the same thing: is let's win, in, let's win in regulation, no overtime, no overtime. But yep. it is a starting five on five. Both teams have had a power play. Haley first got called for an interference in the first period. The Capitals are able to come off the first minute at the end of the first period, first minute of the second period. And then it was Ashton Otteson that got called for a hook with 9.26 to go in the second period. And the Capitals did cash in on that to tie the game or make that a 2-1 game before tying the game with six seconds to go in that second period. So Emily Nemec was the one that got the goal to make it a 2-2 tie. That came in the final seconds of that second period. And now we are set for the third period. Whoever wins the next period will win the hockey game, whether that be this period or the overtime period. That's right. Or whatever overtime period You have period to win the last one. You just have to win the next period, whatever it takes to get that next period win as we're underway here in the third period as it will come all the way down in the offensive end for the Capitals. Dakota McIntyre trying to center it. He goes down to a knee, still in the corner, gets some support from Aubrey Stewart, but the Rangers had three players over there, and they bring it around to the near side, but Elliott Birch was able to pinch in. Buffalo on the starting uh, forward line on this third period with Buffalo along with Stewart and McIntyre. This is held in by the Capitals as Kenzie Grendler will play to the far side boards and will come out of the zone, where it'll be now taken here by Maya Forrester. Back for Grendler again as the Capitals will try and get it back out of the zone as it's kicked along. There's a bunch of players, five players all tangled up over there. The puck is out of the zone and eventually grabbed by the Rangers and the Capitals will make a quick change. It is Anna Rasmussen, her pass for Forrester. That was a good stick there by Dakota McIntyre as the puck comes back out of the zone. Moved back in by Brookings. First minute gone by here in the third period. And it'll be Briley Kafka that will take it here for the Capitals. Her pass up ahead for Haley First. First, her pass over for McIntyre, who is late on his shift. McIntyre will play into the corner and trying to center one for first. And that will be played back across. McIntyre is going to get off the ice here soon to finish off that change. First is able to push it back in. The lead off side. Capitals will finish off that change as Addie Hunsley will play it back to the Red line, now it's grabbed here by Kirsten Miller. Her pass up for Kafka, just off of her stick, or away from her stick, and now it'll be Gracie Peterson that will pick it up. Peterson will swing it around behind her own net. That pass was blocked by Kafka, but it still comes out of the zone. First gets tangled up as the Capitals have to get tied back, uh, tacked back up. Brooke Cruz and First were tangled up as First went down. Now to be played back. Here's a penalty coming up against the Brookings Rangers as Bradley Kafka We'll move it back in the zone. Here is first, first backhander. That's intercepted by Gracie Peterson. And it's a penalty against the Brookings Rangers. A trip is called and the Capitals will have their second power play where they're one for one so far. And it's, the, a, it's a Pelican Power Sports power play. And if you're, you're the Capitals right now, this is exactly what you want. You want to hold that momentum and this is a way to do it. Jalissa Peterson was called for the trip. And the Capitals, who went scoring on the power play the first time, have a shot to take their first lead of this hockey game on their second Pelican Power Sports power play. Face off was won by the Rangers, not cleared out. Miller's a shot that was blocked. It'll come here to the corner, and it'll be taken by Kenzie Grendler, who will throw it all the way down the ice. So Peterson in the box for two or less, as Pashong will move it up the boards. Micah Buffalo will run over. One of the rookies players, Jacoby Anderson, was looking for a penalty, not going to get it. Now the Capitals will have it as Buffalo trying to center one for McIntyre. Backhander, save, rebound, they score! Michael Mike. Buffalo, 3-2 lead for the Caps. A nice developing play there for the Capitals. Got it, got it moving towards the, the net. After a collision over on the far side and that puck was bouncing around for a long time and you could just see what was going to happen. The McIntyre had the first chance and it was poked back by Stewart over to Buffalo. You could see that on the replay. And Stewart and McIntyre will get the assist, should get the assist. And it's a 3-2 lead for the Capitals. They have the lead for the first time and Jacoby Anderson was looking for a penalty called against Micah Buffalo. He's talking about the play, I think, that happened right in front of the Brookings bench. To me, it was kind of a collision. Probably not a penalty. It wasn't called a penalty. 
Yeah. Uh, but but a lot of attention was over there, and meanwhile the the, the Capitals were, were pushing the puck to the net. It looks like the well we get. I'm penalty. wondering if we're going to have a bench penalty. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They, they might be two bench yeah. penalties. We're gonna... So it's still going to be five on five, but there's two players in the penalty box, one for the Capitals and one for the Rangers. Yeah. I didn't see who went for either team. But, yeah, it could be two bench minors against the coaches. I think it, it was. Because it, it looked like the, both ref, the referee was pointing at both coaches and saying, all right, <laughs> we're going to send somebody. Well, that's enough. So it'll be pushed back in. Capitals have their first lead of the hockey game. As Michael Buffalo scores to make it three to two. Stewart and McIntyre with the assist. There's a shot, there's a rebound chance for Reese. So, Kami Larson, I believe, was the one that got called for the Capitals and Ashton Otteson for the Rangers. That's her second penalty of the afternoon. There's a shot, there's a save, there's a penalty coming yeah, up. We're gonna have a penalty Capitals. coming up here. That's gonna be a hook or a hold. So both go for unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. But now we get a penalty coming up against the Capitals. Elliot Birch is gonna go. And they will get called for a hook. Penalties in this this type of a game can mean an awful lot. You put your team a man down, that means it really means something in this close game. So Birch to the penalty box. It's a second power play now for the Brookings Rangers. And the Capitals have to be able to kill it off. The Rangers were number two with 26.9% effectiveness on the power play this season. The Capitals on the penalty kill were sixth best at 80.4%. Kenzie Grendler moves in. That shot is blocked. Capitals can't be too conservative, but they have to make sure that they have an effort to make sure they kill off any penalty against. As Kenzie Grendler winds up with a shot, that is blocked, and that will be cleared all the way down. And a good job there, I believe, by Abel Lavinger to block that shot. And to get the puck all the way back down the ice. It'll be moved up here by the Rangers. Rasmussen lost the handle of the puck. Set back down again by the Capitals by Kirsten Miller. Now here is the Capitals with that chance, and Abel Lavinger will race down the ice. Roy Quam had to cover for the whistle, otherwise Lavinger had a chance to, on a, it would have been a very short breakaway yep. by about two yeah. feet, but she would have had a chance yeah. to get a shot on Quam. A big carom off the wall, and Quam either had to sit back or she had to go out and get it, made the right choice. Still minute, six seconds left to go on the power play for the Rangers. Nemec trying to win the face off over for Stewart, but it is taken here by the Rangers. As they move it in, Jalissa Peterson, good stick there from Miller, but a backhander to the net. And was off the side of the cage as Addison Hunsley will play it all the way around with 50 seconds to go on the power play. Again, the Capitals got to make sure they kill off this Pelican Power Sports power play for the Rookings Rangers. 12.15 left to go. That one comes in front of the blue paint. Now a turnaround shot and a save by Pashog. And we get a whistle and no rebound from Sophia Pashog. So Addison and Larson will both come out of the penalty box. Now, if it was minor penalties on the coaches, it does not affect Larson and Otteson. But if they are penalties on both Larson and Otteson, that means Ash and Otteson has to be careful the rest of the way because that's her second penalty. And I don't know, if, and they announced it as penalties for those players. But they may have just been sitting, is that correct? Yeah, they, they might have been just sitting because right. of if the coaches got called for the bench minor penalties. Well, face off here with 38 seconds to go on the power play, 12-11 left to go in the third period, 3-2 lead for the Hawaii Capitals. In the corner, trying to get back in front of the net. Almost does come in front and is swung just wide. The Rangers had a golden opportunity to tie that hockey game up as that puck was loose coming through the blue paint. Now it's gonna be Sophia Pashag who's lost her goal stick. Bouncing puck, it'll be played out to the blue line and just out of the zone. And now we get a whistle and a penalty coming up against the Brookings Rangers. They're gonna take two of them here? Uh oh and now we're gonna get a misconduct. Uh oh that's gonna be a misconduct here. There's a That's a 10 minute penalty to somebody. That's and Alyssa Peterson, I believe, and yeah. she is hot. So Jalissa Peterson's gonna go, so is Asin Hunsley. And now we gotta figure out exactly what the calls are. There's still 13 seconds and probably will be 13 seconds of a power play left. I think there's a personal foul there at the end, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken. I think he was going to take them both. Yeah, yeah. And then 
and then I think he might have gave her a misconduct also, and that would be to Alyssa Peterson. Yeah, so that would I be, may have that right. I, I, I think they're both gone for two minutes, and then Jalissa Peterson got a 10-minute misconduct right. on top of that, so that will take her to the end of regulation, mm -hmm. through the end of regulation. And that hurts. So Hunsley and Peterson are both in the penalty box. Now, also, I, I should have put what, what name it was. For Jal if it was Jalissa Peterson, they got the penalty the first time. Because if it is Jalissa Peterson, they got the first penalty. That means she'd be out of the hockey game. If it's three penalties, and I think well, it is. Well, that's exactly what they're doing. You hit it right, John. Yeah, Jalissa Peterson has picked up her second and third penalty with that. And yep. she's done for the game. And she's still not very happy with what went down. But we are going to be five on five hockey. So it, it's still, yeah, 13 seconds of a power play for the Rangers. And once that ends, In 13 Elliot, seconds, Elliot yes. Birch will come back out. And then we get five on five. But we've got to make sure everybody is serving the penalty that they need to. And I think now we're going to have, uh, did not see the number that went over no. there. Maybe Chloe Ziegeldorf that will be to the penalty box for the Brookings Rangers. So there's a power play here for the Brookings Rangers for another 13 seconds. So, and then we'll go five on five hockey. So now with the Capitals trying to get back to the puck with five seconds to go on the power play. It'll be behind the net. Power play ends. Elliot Birch will come out of the penalty box. There's a shot and a save made and a whistle with 11.28 to go. So there was a misconduct on top of the penalty to Jalissa Peterson. And which, again, was the reason why she's now in the hockey game because that was her third penalty. So we're back to five on five, 11 28 to go, and we're feeling more and more like this is state tournament hockey right now. <laughs> it's state tournament hockey. There's a lot at stake here in this first round matchup as this will be moved up ahead. The Capitals, Haley First will bring it in. She's got a partial break. First in, a save made by Quam. Oh, what a glove save by Rory Quam. <laughs> and Rory Quam looking very confident in a three to two game. That was a that was a fantastic save by Quam and a little bit of showmanship with the, the glove save. She says, bring it on, bring the, it on. Every time the glove, the goalie will snap the glove like that, you, you know the confidence <laughs> is there and, and you're and you're feeling pretty good. Or you, there's, I think there's a lot of extra energy right now. She's feeling pretty good between the pipes right now. This will be out of the zone here by the Brookings Rangers, pushed into the offensive end. Mallory Learcamp will try and chip it off the boards, but it's grabbed by Brookings, bumped off the puck from Dakota McIntyre. Up ahead, make that uh, for Mabel Lavinger. Now is Kafka, Therese tries to swing in, but was off of, <laughs> it was Gracie, uh, Shauna Peterson that bumped into Kafka, knocked her over, and then Kafka never got the puck back to get a shot away. When she tried to push it over to a teammate and couldn't yeah. quite get there, right there, yeah, she's right. trying to push it to a teammate. It was so close to maybe, and of course, at that point too, you're, you're trying to give Kafka separation so if she does either pass the puck or there's a rebound chance, you don't want to be standing right on top of her. But it was so close to maybe getting a, a break for the Capitals. This will be in front. Stewart, a shot in the same made. Rebound by Buffalo, and that shot was blocked. Never got to the net. It is now taken by Forrester. Buffalo got down to one knee to block a pass. This will be thrown back across. This will be iced by the Capitals with 10.30 to go, 10.29 to go here in the third period. Whew. This is a fun <laughs> hockey game. A lot of energy on this first day, the first round for both of these teams. It's our third game of the day, and it's a good one. Well, he said the 4-5 matchup usually results in the best games. Well, this is living up to being the best game of day number one. As is Elliot Birch in the corner here for the Capitals. Maya Forrester, Emily Nemec will take it for the Capitals. Played it off the boards to herself. As she'll move it up and out of the zone, a pass up ahead. Cami Larson will move in. Larson trying to get a shot away, but that was off the stick. And it's played back to the corner here on the near side, up the boards. Nemec and Larson was able to stop the puck for a moment. Honison will move it up ahead. And now it's going to be kicked along by Forrester. But she lost the handle of the puck. And now we're going to get a penalty coming up against the Capitals. So the Rangers will get the extra man on the ice as Roy Quam will get off and then the Capitals will touch it up. Miller, and we get a whistle and a hook is called. I believe that's going to be Cami Larson that will get called for the penalty. It is. 
So that is her second penalty, and she will have to be careful the rest of the way. Well, if you're the Brookings Rangers now, you're down by one. And you know how important this power play is because Coach uh, Jacoby Anderson has taken his time out, knowing this is the third power play for the Rangers. They're 0 for 2 so far, and Brookings is taking their power, uh, taking their time out to get everybody rested, maybe a little bit of chance to reset some to kind of calm everybody down a little bit, but this is a very important power play yep. uh, for the Brookings Rangers. And, and Jacoby Kobe Anderson, like you said, he knows that this may be his shot right now to tie this thing up. Jeff, how you doing up there? I'm doing great. This is a, <laughs> this is a fantastic hockey game. Uh, Micah Buffalo got the go-ahead goal on the power play. It was Dakota McIntaffer and Aubrey Stewart that got the assist to make it a 3-2 score. And that is where we stand right now at 9.47 to go. The Capitals have scored the last three goals with the Rangers scoring the first two in the first period and the Capitals scoring two in the second and then getting the go-ahead goal, go up 3-2 with 9.47 to go and the third power play now for the Brookings Rangers. Capitals are winning the special teams battle right now. They're two for two in the power play, mm -hmm. but a 3-2 lead, or 0 for two for the Rangers and a 3-2 lead for the Capitals. Special teams, very important when it comes to the state tournament. But Brookings will have a power play here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, their third power play coming up. And we're gonna name a South Dakota Amateur Hockey Association player of the game after this one. We're a mile away from that right now. There, there's a, there, there's about sure five different names that you can go for right now. Two on one team, three on another, because they yep. all score goals. <laughs> Face off is won by the Brookings Rangers. Kenzie Grenler will move it back down the near side boards. Trying to get back free. Elliot Birch lost her stick. A nice play there from Birch to recover. And that'll allow a shot for the Rangers, but still with it is Brookings. Forrester over, shot, save made, rebound. It is in front, and Pashong is somehow able to cover for the whistle. But bounced up in the air. Yeah. That puck. When that puck goes up in the air like that, you never know where it's going to land. <laughs> That's right. That was Forrester that got the shot. And a juggling act again by Pashong, who dropped her stick to make sure she covered that with both of her hands. And Brookings Rangers with a strong push to the net. There's a shot of the face-off. That's in the glove of Pashong. Another whistle with 9.24 to go. And a minute 37 remaining here on the power play for the Brookings Rangers. Winner of this game, they don't know who they're going to play until after the 4.30 game is done between Sioux Falls and Watertown. As it's now Aubrey Stewart that will pick it up here in the neutral zone for the Capitals. Thinking attacking shorthanded. Stewart to the corner. But it lost the puck and Kenzie Grendler. Her pass will go over, that one misses. That will be down for an icing, and we get a whistle with 9.05 to go. I thought maybe it was touched, but they say it wasn't. I think a lot of Brookings fans would agree with you. Yeah. There, there's a couple down there that we <laughs> thought was uh, saying that it was touched by the Rangers, but it is an icing and a face off to the right, so make that the left of Roy Quam with 9.05 to go and 119 remaining on the power play for Brookings. Face-off will be won here by the Rangers. Kenzie Grendler back behind the net. Kind of set the offense up and get the power play up the ice here. Grendler will stop in the corner and turn back around, go back behind the net this time here on the near side. Grendler will play it back for Maya Forrester. It is Ava Lavinger by herself in the offensive zone for the Capitals. And the Rangers are moving the puck back behind the nets. Rasmussen now will move it up. As Reese stepped up, missed her, and now Rasmussen got up high, and the shot goes high. You're wondering when the Rangers are going to get the attack moving forward. It almost turned right into a goal. This will be cleared out by the Capitals. The Rangers had a good chance for a give and go, but it went underneath the stick, and it comes out of the zone. Kirsten Miller will send it all the way back down again with 30 seconds to go here in the power play. 8-14 remaining here in the third period. It's a long time left on hockey with a 3-2 lead for the Capitals. Rasmussen moves it up the ice. Moves it in the offensive end. Elliott Birch was able to take the puck away. Play it around here to the near side. That is going to be stopped, though, by Forrester. Try that bumper play again, but that one, Kirsten Miller is able to intercept. And as the Rangers are making a change, it'll be the last seconds of this power play. The puck will end up in the bench of the Capitals. And it is five-on-five five hockey now. The Capitals do kill off the power play against the Rangers, the Pelican Power Sports power play. Rangers are 0 for 3. 
And a face-off coming at center ice. Big penalty kill there for the Caps. And now the Caps go back to being five on five, and you, and you can't sit back and try and kill off the last seven minutes and 40 seconds of this hockey game. You still have to be aggressive. You can't be too conservative as now Haley first got a chance to move it back in the offensive end. Winds up with a shot and into the glove of Roy Klum. And first had a chance to maybe carry that puck into the offensive end a little bit farther. She had Kafka racing in and they're talking to each other. <laughs> Kafka put the glove out and said, hey, you, you know you got me. Yeah. You got me if you need me. Well, you throw it at the net and you hope Kafka's there for a rebound. I guess is what you do. First will try and win the face off. Try to get over for Kafka. It'll be back to the blue line where Learcamp is able to hold it in. Learcamp gets to the forehand, throws to the net, redirect to the score! Haley first! 4-2! Her second goal of the season! Haley nice first. redirect. And if you're Rory Quam, you, you're not going to find that one. That was a great redirect right in the crease. Mallory Learcamp's only her second assist of the season. She had one all regular season. And she makes the, the, the shot that was redirected by first in the back of the net. And the Capitals lead it 4-2 on the Kubota scoreboard. Right back in come the Capitals off the faceoff. Goes all the way down to Quam. Buffalo sends it in front. It's loose and unable to get a shot away. McIntyre was trying to dive for it. It's a great play by Triplett. <laughs> <laughs> Back in time with a little bit of a slash on Triplett as well, coming coming up from the from the ice. And then Elliot Birch will take another penalty for the Capitals. So Elliot Birch now has picked up her second penalty. And it will be a checking call, I believe. It might have been a rough. A slash, maybe. A slash. I don't know. It, it doesn't like, matter. They're all two minutes. <laughs> it, yeah, it will be a two-minute power play for the Rangers. We'll see if we can get the... It is a check against uh, it was Elliot checking, Birch. Yep. And with 6.57 to go here in the third period, if you're Brookings, you're down by two goals. This was kind of what you wanted right now is to yep. get yourself a power play because you get yourself a power play, score the next two minutes, you're back within one shot, and you still have, well, you'll still have about five minutes remaining if you do score this power play. Roy Kwam will have to play it back. Capitals, though, Albert Stewart had a chance to get it, but Maya Forrester with a good stick. So it'll be played around. That'll be iced by Brookings with 6.37 to go. Boy, Aubrey Stewart's really played a, a, a nice game. She just has no quit, and she's always by the puck. If you if you're, if you watch her and McIntaffer do a great job. They're two of the smallest girls on the ice, but they just never quit. I, th there's something about those two. They're so yeah. much fun to watch. And you mentioned that they, just, they have a motor that doesn't stop. They know where to be on the ice. And a face-off was won by Lavinger. And you do kind of cheer for the for the quote-unquote little guy. <laughs> yep. you know, they they yep. are smaller girls on the ice, but they don't they know they they know they're small, but they don't play like they're small. They play yep. like they're much bigger than what they are. We called them the littles, I think, a couple seasons ago. <laughs> and, and Erasmus said, "Yeah, they're still still uh, still in, little. They're still in middle school too. So they got a long time to be playing for the Hawaii Capitals. This will be offside yep. against the Rangers with 6:15 to go here in the third period. Rangers need to get into the offensive zone and set up some sort of power play. They, they've been on the power play a few times, but never really been able to set things up in an offensive scheme. Faceoff will be won by the Capitals all the way down. Ava Lavinger." Very good on those off on those draws, and she wins that one cleanly to push it all the way down the ice and force Brookings to go all the way back up the ice with still 105 to go in the power play. Under six minutes to go here in the third period. Capitals still lead it by two, four to two on the Kubota scoreboard. Pass in front. That was a redirected. They score. Brookings makes it a one-goal game as that puck will bounce a couple different times. And an easy open net goal to make it a 4-3 hockey game. That's what you have to do if you're Brookings. You have to get Bashan moving, and that's exactly what they did. Back and forth, you'll see the pass right there. Back on over, and a nice play by the Brookings Rangers. Sawyer Triplett gets the goal, her 13th of the season. And that ends the streak of four straight goals by the Capitals. And with 5.51 to go here in the third period. This thing is not over. The Rangers <laughs> got what they wanted now. He talked about the Capitals having to kill off the penalty in the second period to get the goal to make it 2-1. to one. They did both those things. The Rangers had two things to do. 
get a power play and score on that power play, and they did that, so they're back within one right now. 4-3 is our score with 5.40 to go here in the third period. And now Kafka, good stick lift. Hard Throw hit. goes down, yep. Peterson went down. There's a shot that's blocked, and it will come out of the zone. A couple of players are tumbling down, and it will be an icing against the Brookings Rangers with 5.24 to go here in the third period. Now if you're Jim Wadine on the other side, you're saying, all right, girls, you got to stay on the penalty box here. That's four yes. power plays for the Rangers. Yeah. We, we do not want to give them a power play the rest of this third period. Absolutely. Yeah, both teams need to stay out of the penalty box right now. Yeah, was, yeah, if you're going to give yourself a chance to win. Even if even if you give, take a penalty if you're Brookings and, and kill off the penalty, that's still two minutes off the clock that you don't want to have to kill off penalties. There's a centering pass from Larson. Now Katie Reese will try and center back to Larson. And it's picked back up by Brookings. It is Rasmussen up the boards on the near side. Good exit out of the zone by the Rangers as Kenzie Grendler starts to move it up. And a good play from Elliot Birch. She's got to be careful, does Elliot Birch. She's got two penalties called against her. So does Kami Larson. In this hockey game, both of those two are one penalty away from being kicked out of the hockey game. And Brookings has lost one already. Yeah, Jalissa Peterson has lost or is lost for the game as she picked up three penalties. This will be now taken back. Kafka looking for someone in front. Kafka will try and swing around. It's turned in front by Katie Reese again, and that was a good save by Rory Quam with four and a half to go. This will be a pass that goes behind. And now taken back by Kafka. Kafka will wait. She's got plenty of time. The pass will go up for Lavinger, but just behind her. And it'll be taken back here again. And Mallory Learcamp will have to race after it. Elliot Birch, she's going to be careful. She was trying to play the positioning of getting over to the middle of the net. And the Rangers fans were looking for an interference call. 4.05 left to go here in the third period. Learcamp will move it in. Her shot goes wide. It'll come all the way back out of the zone where Elliot Birch will play it for the Capitals. We'll turn back around on her forehand, play it across, and it's going to be picked up by the Rangers. Otteson will send it back in off the side of the net. Birch now with 3.45 to go here in the third period. That goes off the referee after it went off the glass. Stays in the offensive zone, but Birch had a couple of efforts to get it out of the zone. Here is now Kafka, one hand on the stick. Trying to get free. Kafka's in. She scores! Bradley Kafka makes a 5-3. And how long was it going to be before we heard from her? She has scored 23, now it gives her 24. It was a matter of time, and boy, if you're the Caps right now, it couldn't come at a better time. That's a tough one if you're a Brookings Ranger right now. So 3.35 to go in the third period, and the Hawaii Capitals have a two-goal lead once again on the Kubota scoreboard. Riley Kafka, Jim. Or Jeff, yeah. you talked about need to be on the stick of, yeah. uh, of Bradley Kafka. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. So now the Rangers again have to try and score twice in the next 325 of this third period. Kenzie Grendler centering one. It is now Buffalo that will play it around. The Rangers, they're defending state champions. They had the test against the Hawaii Capitals last year in the first round that they overcame and ended up, I wouldn't say cruising to a state championship, but they had a shutout in the state championship game. They, they were losing in that game against the Capitals and they never, never trailed the rest of the state tournament. And now they've got to find a way to score two goals in the next three minutes to force overtime. Down five to three on the Kubota scoreboard. This will be sent all the way down. Roy Quam, she'll play it so there is no icing. She could have let it go for an icing, but will end up playing it so the Capitals will kill off more time here in this late in the third period with 2.40 to go. Kami Larson now will turn with it. By the way, we still got to name a player of the game. <laughs> that, that's, that's a tough task with five different goal scorers for the Capitals right now. As this will be played up here, Cami Larson. That one trying to get a pass over for Dakota McIntaffer, but it'll be to for Gracie Peterson. Capitals make sure that everything gets in deep. Cami Larson had fallen over. She's going to get back in the play late with 2.05 left to go here in the third period. We'll see how long though they keep Roy Quam in net. This will be moved back. Learcamp gains the blue line. And it'll be Ava Kali. Now back for Ashton Otteson. Taken back by Emily Nemec. 1.45 to go in the third period. 
This will be Katie Reese back for the Capitals. Reese for Kafka. Kafka swings in. Kafka with a shot, and Claw makes a huge save to keep this a two-goal game with 1.37 to go here in the third period. Kafka could have shot that as soon as she got it on her stick, but she was patient, got a good look at it. You don't have to push right now if you're the Caps, but you do have to play smart hockey. Face-off will be to the right of Roy Quam. Emily Nemec will take the face-off and won it back to Learkip. Trying to get a shot free. Kafka trying to get back in front. She'll turn with him. The forehand a save made by Quam off the blocker. First back to the blue line. There's a shot, and that one was blocked. Comes back for Hunsley now. Her shot was blocked, and the Rangers can get going the other way with 1-0, with 1.17 to go here in the third period. Here goes Quam off the ice to get the extra attacker on. With 1.10 to go, the net is empty here for the Rangers. They need two goals in the next minute and five seconds. A shot that got through and kicked away by Pashong. Out to the blue line. There's a shot, and then another block shot by Addie Hunsley. Kenzie Grendler around it comes with 52 seconds to go here in the third period. Briley Kafka will turn with it. She's back behind the net. We'll see if she wants to go for that empty net. Up ahead for Emily Nemec. Capitals have an empty net. Nemec is in, trying to seal it. She does! <laughs> Emily Nemec makes it 6-3 with 38.1 to go in the third. And the Capitals will advance to the second round tomorrow night. Caps have played that last minute exactly like they needed to. Be patient, be smart with the puck, and that's exactly what happened. The Capitals are gonna seal this one with 38 seconds left. Did exactly what they needed to do in the end of this last period. Down two nothing after the first period. Tied the game with six seconds to go in the second. And have scored four third period goals to lead it 6-3 to three on the Kubota scoreboard. That is Nemec's second goal of the game. Nemec tied the game at 2-2 with that six seconds left to go in the period. Bradley Kaffigan hit the assist. Micah Buffalo will move back in. Buffalo, and there's a shot and a save from Quam. 18 seconds left to go here in the third period. So the Capitals will get a date at seven o'clock tomorrow night against the winner of Sioux Falls and Watertown. And it will be backed up, seven seconds to go. Capitals will go 3-0 against the Brookings Rangers. 4.1 left to go here in the third period. South Dakota Amateur Hockey Association, we need to do a player of the game. With, and with, we have picked it. I think with two goals, Emily Nemec is going to yep, get the, yep. the player of the game. So we'll talk with her coming up in the post-game show. The Capitals will win it 6-3 over the Brookings Rangers in advance to the second round of the state tournament to take on the winner of Watertown and Sioux Falls. We will step aside when we come back. We've got the post game and the player of the game. You're listening to Wyatt Capitals Hockey, or making you listen to the state tournament on Capital City Rock, KKQQ, and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports. Your best days of the year start here at Kubota Orange Days. It's the year's biggest selection of Kubota tractors, zero-turn mowers, and utility vehicles, including the number one selling compact tractor in the USA. Plus the year's best deals, like 0% APR for 84 months or up to $3,300 off select compact tractors. Orange goes all day, sales ending soon. Visit your local dealer today. Find your nearest dealer at KubotaOrangedays.com. So surprising. So much fun for everyone. So not what you expected. So much more to explore. So much to see, hear, smell, taste, enjoy. So out there, yet so close. So pack your bags, fill the tank, grab the kids, tell the dog. What are you waiting for? There's so much Brookings, so little time. 
Wagner Auto Company is your complete transportation headquarters. Now is the time to order your new Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram vehicles. Plus, a good selection of quality pre-owned and certified pre-owned vehicles. They'll take care of you after the sale with a full-service parts and auto body shop with trained technicians. Along with a friendly financing team that'll work with you to find the best deal and one that'll fit your budget. Wagner Auto is your local full-service family-owned dealership for over 115 years. WagnerAuto.com. That's WagnerAuto.com. The lawyers at the May Adam Law Firm in Pierre know how important your families are to you. If you've been putting off getting your affairs in order, know that the May Adam Law Firm is available to counsel you through your questions and help you get the documents in place so that you've made your loved ones secure. Call them at 224-8803 and they can chat with you about how to document your concerns and care for your family. We're all in this together and the May Adam Law Firm is ready and able to help. Pier Regional Airports meets the aviation-related needs of South Dakota's state capital, its residents, and the businesses of Central South Dakota. Pier Regional Airport is a city-owned public airport that can fly out to any destination that Delta, American Airlines, and United fly seven days a week. So, while you're looking to travel by air, enjoy the convenience of flying out of Pier, where parking is always free. Skip the drive and fly from PIR. Hello, hockey fans. First National Bank in Pierre is excited to sponsor the 2024 Varsity Hockey State Tournament. Good luck to all the talented players and a special shout out to our hometown team, the Hawaii Capitals. At First National Bank, we're always on your team and ready with the assist to reach your financial goals. Check us out at firstnationalbanks.com or at First National BNK on Facebook. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. When you're in the need for high-quality replacement auto parts, look no further than Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop in Pier. Xander's has been servicing the Pier area for over 40 years. Their professional parts techs can get you the parts you need and get you back on the road. Stop by Xander Auto Parts and Machine Shop at 500 West Sioux in Pier or call 224-9221. Xander's, your source for domestic and foreign auto parts and accessories. And we are back after a good game. We have Mr. John Winkler has the honors to be with our South Dakota Amateur Hockey Association player of the game. All right, we're down here at the White Cowboys bench talking with Emily Devin, our player of the game. And Emily, two goals. You scored the tying goal with six seconds left. Talk about that goal because you went diving for the puck. How did you see that and how exciting was that to get that goal? Um, I thought that Katie made it in, so I just saw the puck and I just shoved it in again. Uh, then you get the empty net goal to seal the win. Uh, obviously a, a hard fought game. How satisfying was it to get that empty net goal to kind of take the breather knowing that you guys won the game? It was very satisfying, I think. So now you're in the state semifinals. You get to face the winner of Sioux Falls Watertown. Uh, obviously, you know, this is a, a state tournament, so you're going to take whoever you play. But how, how much fun, how much fun is it going to be able to watch this next game and get ready for this state semifinals? Um, I feel like it's going to be a very intense game, and I'm excited to watch it. How much fun playing on this ice, new arena and everything? How, how much do you enjoy it? I like this ice a lot. It's... Well, congratulations on the win. Uh, two goals here tonight, and we'll, we'll see you tomorrow night uh, for the state semifinal. Thank huh? you. That is Emily Nemec, our player of the game, as we'll send the things back up to Jim. That's John Winkler down at a very happy Oahe Capitol bench as they come out ahead over the Brookings Rangers 6-3. to three. That score does not indicate uh, what that game was like, but a hard-fought tournament-style game. And uh, the Capitals move on, and the Brookings Rangers will go into the consolation bracket or the other side of the bracket tomorrow. So with that, Brookings Rangers fall 6-3 to three to the Wahi Capitals. We will be signing off of this broadcast. We will be coming back for Watertown and Sioux Falls. That game will start at 4.30. We'll go on the air probably, probably about 4.15. So we are going to close out this broadcast, and then we will be back with a brand new broadcast, and we will be back to bring you Sioux Falls and Watertown here at the, at the Prairie Lakes Ice Arena.
You have been listening to the 2024 Girls State Hockey Tournament on Capital City Rock and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports presented by Kubota. The State Hockey Tournament is brought to you by Pelican Power Sports, Xander Auto Parts, Wagner Auto, AGE, AirTech, Weatherall, Harding Electric, the South Dakota Amateur Hockey Association, Kathy Sunshine Properties, Beck Motors, Visit Brookings, Venture Communications, First Dakota National Bank, Hermanson Antodontics, Hockey Headquarters, J Bar Construction, May Adam, Leisure Palace, Capital City Ford Lincoln and Toyota, First National Bank of Pier. Pier Regional Airport, Hunsley Auto Body and Sandblasting, the Watertown Area Chamber of Commerce, the Field House, and First United Methodist Church. Join us all weekend for state tournament hockey action on Capital City Rock and on YouTube at Capital City Rock Sports presented by Kubota. This has been a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports, Central South Dakota's sports leader.